got it locked on rodeo radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in the motherfucking house. So right about now. And I say, yo Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me. They never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube, you like to play. And don't shit mix by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth, I like concert. Now I like the motherfucking rodeo. Buying a tape or two, that's what the hell I do. You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game. And I'm in it. Ice Cube will fuck you up in a minute with a right, left, right, making you sick. And then you see Tony A is on the mix. Welcome back, everyone, to Rhodium Radio, episode 243. I want to thank everybody who's tuned in, everybody in the live chat, those who are not in the live chat, everybody who's liked, comment, subscribe. It doesn't matter. You guys are still watching, even if you guys disliked. So uh, before I introduce my very special guest of the night, uh, once again, if you guys didn't watch Drinking with the Wizard the other day, we had a great, great time. MC Wicks, Cujo, Cuervo, Ashley Alvarez, and myself. All we do is just drink, we sit around, and we just talk about whatever. So I want to thank everybody who tuned in. Uh, we will be back on next week as well with another Drinking with the Wizard. So tune in for our special guest. Uh, other than that, if you want to be on Rodium Radio, please submit your music along with a short bio. And if you have videos, videos help to rodiumradio at gmail.com, rodiumradio at gmail.com. Other than that, you know what? I want to thank 110 South once again for the hat that they blessed me with. And I want to thank Fashion Town for uh, um, uh, the shirt that they blessed me with. That's where I actually get all my dickies, my chonies, my socks, everything from Fashion Town. So much love to Jen, much love to Danny from uh, uh, 110 South. So other than that, if I have any, any more, uh, um, I don't know, uh, anything I want to add, I'll say before the break or during the break or whatever. So uh, without further ado, please allow me to introduce my very special guest of the night, Marvelous Inc. How you doing, bro? Thank you, bro. Uh, appreciate you having me podcast your show um just it's a pleasure to be here bro. thank you you know what i'm glad you're here you know i wanted to ask you uh um uh when did you first hear or how did you first hear of rhodium radio um man through several people several people um shot me i think some of your your first interviews that you did and it's just it's it's gravitating bro like um some people have a i guess they have a a voice for the the speaker that you know and you, you could hear somebody talk and then it's just like I don't know, it's just, it's cool. Some people don't have a voice for the, it's just kind of like, you don't care what they're talking about, you just don't want to hear them anymore. Right. So, yeah, when I watched the first interviews that you did, the way you articulated yourself and the questions that you asked, it's, it's very professional. Bro. Like Thank that. you, man. I greatly appreciate it. And people always ask me, where did you go to learn how to talk or a podcast? And I said, I didn't. I just turned it on and I went for it. That's right. That was it. So when people ask me, so those of you guys that are interested in podcasting, all you got to do is uh, 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 turn it on. And here's what I always tell people. If people like you, they'll tune in. That's just it. If people like you, they will tune in. Okay, now, uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. For the people that may not know, uh, or, or who are first, in, who are barely being introduced to Marvelous Inc. today on Rodeo Radio, maybe have never heard of you, uh, give us a little bit of your background, for an example, like where were you born and where were you raised? Okay, so I was born and raised in East Los Angeles. Um, um, people know me for my tattooing. Um, they also know me for, um, I'm very into cultura, our culture, and um, also, you know, a lot, a lot of other subjects as, such as biology. Um, I just like to, you know, further my knowledge on a lot of stuff, um, especially stuff that's been kept from us, you know? Like yes. People like to call them conspiracies, but, you know, I like to show you the facts. Like, I'll show you actual documents that you can look up. That you, It's not a conspiracy, bro. That's right. just a word that's been made up. Yeah. And you, and you know what? I, I like that you say that because I did my homework on you and I watched a lot on you. Uh, uh, when you Google Marvelous Inc., a lot comes up. Mm. Okay. So I took my time and I did my research on you, you know, to come up with some good questions. Mm. You know, 
one thing that I will say is that whenever I shared something with someone that, uh, how would you say, that I believe in, right. I don't just say, take my word for it, bro, it's mm -hmm. good. No, my thing is do your research on what I tell you. And if you find out that I lied to you, you don't ever have to talk to me again. You know what I'm saying? My word is no no longer any good if you find out that I lied to you, mm. you know? So I, I, I understand and I appreciate when you say, you know, uh, um, you know, people call them conspiracies, but I like to show facts. Mm. Cause sometimes just saying it is what it is, now that's not good enough, right. you know? So uh, from what I understand, you are a third generation Maravilla, right. uh, 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 if I'm correct, gang member? Right. Okay. And uh, your grandfather, if I'm correct, was born 1918. Right. Your uh, dad, 1940. Right. And you were 1982. Correct. So now my next question is, because you brought your son here, uh, Michael, uh, uh, did do you ever plan on passing that on to him? Not, not, um, how do I say this? I don't, I don't pass on, I pass on our heritage. I pass on the knowledge of, of how the neighborhood, like right. what, uh, what it represents, but not the the jail politics side. If right. you were to say like um, taking out raza or going at it with other barrios, um, you know that wouldn't make no sense on 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 getting him involved in something, or even myself when I was younger getting involved in su in such something of a big magnitude that I don't know the origins of, of what I'm beefing over. You yeah. know, and a lot of a lot of guys from different neighborhoods, you know, they're going at it with different barrios and they're disrespecting other neighborhoods and they have no idea where that beef, you know, resonated from. They're fighting over maybe a, a man's um, you know, dysfunctional relationship from his hyena cheating with another dude from another barrio. Now he's dissing that neighborhood. And, you know, you're gonna go ahead and take out a homie from another barrio, part of your own your own race, and you when you go get busted you know, those people are mo most likely gonna be your, people you're spreading with, people that you're eating with, people that are gonna give you a fish kit or, or send a care package to, or or just, you know, share some words of advice on how to conduct yourself and, and look out for you. And now, now what's the reason that you're busted for? You know, you're no longer able to diss that barrio because now you gotta stick together as a, as a unit, you know? So why not start doing that shit out here? Why not start educating our, our raza starting with your kids here? People send their kids to school and they think that that the school system is supposed to educate your kids. Nah, Charlie, the schooling starts at home with the way you conduct yourself in front of your kids. Then you teach your kids, show them words, teach them etiquette, show them morals, how to conduct themselves with other men that's not going to put themselves in a bad or precarious situation that's going to get their ass smoked. Absolutely, man. Oh, really? I just, look. There are times that I interview guests and sometimes they leave me speechless because I could not have said it better, mm. okay? Um, I've always said this, if you wanna ask somebody, say I, I want to, uh, for an example, I wanna know what Mega Man, he, by the way, he's our guest tonight. I wanna ask, uh, um, man, you know what, tell me about Mega Man. You know who I should really ask? Or his kids. Mm. Mm. They'll tell me the truth. They'll tell me the truth about, you know, is he real, mm. is he fake? You know, how he is, how he treats his, you know, his wife. And I'm just creating a hypothetical scenario. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm glad that you're sharing that because I think there's a lot of parents out there that need to hear it or, or even people out there that youngsters, possibly like your son's age, that maybe I should listen to my dad. Maybe I shouldn't get involved because if I, if I'm correct, you became a Maravilla gang member at the age of 10, if I'm correct. Right. At the age, now, at the age of 10, what is that? Fifth, fourth grade? <laughs> leaving fourth grade, entering fifth grade. Yeah. See, at that time, I remember I was getting in trouble for watching Saturday Night Fever. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and and I remember one time, like, uh, I mean, I just, uh, I got busted. I, I was never like a weed smoker, but I hung around with dudes that were smoking weed like in the fourth grade. And I just thought like that was like the biggest crazy thing. It wasn't until I got like the seventh grade, because back then during high school started seventh, eighth and ninth. Mm. Uh, when, I, when I saw dudes like banging now, seventh, eighth and ninth grade. But at 10 years old, uh, what what do you think it was that influenced you or motivated you or made you go that route? I think um, even though my, my grandfather always gave me a, a lot of wisdom or good advice and, and he always scolded me. He used the word scold, scold a lot. Yes. Um, and, you know, I got hit up with everything. The closest thing to him, a broom, we had an old school um, uh, paddle for obedience that they had for their kids when, when my dad was little. And I always remember that. We get hit with that. But um, I always remember what he talked to me about being a man, about just being a man. And, and even though he instilled all this stuff in me, you know, that probably was going in one ear and out the other, 
you know, my subconscious was picking it up. And I kind of, I guess, you know, to think about it, I, I guess I wanted to prove myself to him and, and my dad. Even though my dad was not in my life the way he should, maybe should have been. You know, he was always in prison. And when he was out, you know, the conversation that we had was about gangs, about how to conduct yourself, about how to look a man in his eyes when you talk to him. Don't be a rat. How to um, always be down for the get down, no matter what. Like, you know, be out numbers, just be down, you know, just be down, down to get down, you know. Um, never speak behind somebody's back, you know, make sure they're in your face when, when you're saying something to them. Um, just stuff like that. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I want to I wanna be all that and more. And to never, my, my dad, I remember my dad um, telling me one time to never never use him or his dad, he said, don't ever use my dad as a reference. And I was like, I didn't know what reference meant. Like, what, what is reference? And he said, don't ever use, um, like, uh, today will be clout. Don't ever use our, our name or, or mm. say, oh, my dad's from the neighborhood or whatever. You, you, stand on, you stand on your own, you know? So that meant a lot to me. You know, I never said when I got hit up from Mother Vargas, oh, I have a cousin from there, or I know your homeboy, or I was busted with this person. You know that just that just shows your your weakness or your 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 you know you're an unstable person. Stand on your on your own and just represent yourself, your city, whatever you're gonna represent. You know, do it to the fullest, homie. Yeah. You know, so a lot of people, it's sad. You know, they they don't do that these days. You know, they don't they don't maybe they didn't get that structure. You know, and by the time they find out, it's a little bit too late. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, one thing I want to talk about that I don't hear a lot of people talk about or I don't hear a lot in interviews about yourself is that if I'm correct, when you were five years old, uh, you studied you or you got into martial arts. Right. A lot of people may not know and correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you participated in the Junior Olympics. Right. Uh, you won a gold, you won two silver and one bronze. Right. And we're talking about medals. Right. What, what, now, what inspired that at five years old to get into martial arts? The Bruce Lee movies. The Bruce Lee movies, of course. <laughs> the old Bruce Lee movies, yeah. And and also um, Bloodsport had just came out. Um, a lot of, um, all the, there was all about action and about masculinity back then. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Chuck Norris, um, you got Steven Seagal, Van Damme, all yeah. those, um, you got Beverly Hills Cop just came out. You know, and I used to go to my, to my grandpa every every Wednesday and Friday, we were at the movies. We were at the movies. Mijo, we gotta see the Get Ready, we gotta see this movie. And bam, right after school, we head out to the movies and go watch the movies. And I'm just so fascinated watching all these guys, you know, do all these moves and stuff. And I wanted to do it, too. So, you know, they, they rolled me in some classes. And I thought I was Bruce Lee when I went home, you know, yeah. kicking my cousins in the head and doing all kinds of dumb acrobats, hurting myself and getting yelled at, getting spanked. And I still thought I was bad, you know. Right, some right, little right. little misfit. You, you, you know what's funny? Because uh, at least I'm going to speak for my family. Right. If we saw a Japanese guy, we didn't know he was Japanese. If we saw a Filipino guy, we didn't know he was Filipino. If we saw a Korean guy, we didn't know he was Korean. We, we saw a Chinese guy. We didn't. To us, oh, it's Chino. That <laughs> yeah. was it. Like, they were all Chinos. Yeah, yeah. And I always thought that all the Chinos knew Kung Fu, Karate, whatever. Right. Like, I, I remember I was in elementary, and I was a big, big Bruce Lee fan. Mm. And, of course, I would see a guy that had slanted eyes. And as a kid, I just thought that they were all what Bruce Lee was. Mm. So, hey, do you know karate? You know, I didn't know that's not what Bruce Lee did. Mm -hmm. But I said, karate, yeah, can you teach me some moves? Mm -hmm. You know, I thought they all knew it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I thought every black kid knew how to pop. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. but yeah, but you know what? So, so obviously that inspired you. So did you end up going to a school? Did somebody uh, train you at home like a Mr. Miyagi or? No, yeah, I, I joined actually um, in, the, in the, the studio right there on Lancaster Boulevard where they filmed... Um, the movie Karate, um, the Karate Kid with okay. Daniel Danielson. So I started right there. It was um, Taekwondo. I also they enrolled me in another martial arts class, um, Jiu Jitsu. Um, this was all in North Hollywood area. Mm. And um, later on, when I, I got shipped out to my grandpa's house, I got taken away from, by social services, and my mom had went to prison. Um, my grandfather adopted me, and he enrolled me in a in another Taekwondo studio where I got another um, uh, you call him a sensei yes. or a master. And um, I started earning my degrees and belts until I finally got to, um, I got, my highest I got to was red and black, but I never got the, I mean, I got my black medal, my black belt, but I wasn't able to pay for my black belt. It was right. $350. And um, around that time, I, they had dropped my sponsorship because I had gotten sponsored um, for fighting and they were paying for all the hotels that I was going to in different, well, not, I don't want to say championships, but different um, um, 
exhibition fights that I was okay. fighting at. Okay. Is it true that you had gotten a sponsorship, but when they found out that you were you got tattooed on my stomach, on your stomach, mm -hmm. that they decided like this is not the image that we want. Right. They didn't want they didn't want us or want the kids being a, me being an influence. And that was the reason why I got um, kicked out of parochial school too, to Our, our Lady of Soledad. I used to go to that school. And they didn't want me, um, you know, being an influence around the kids. A lot of kids back then, there was a couple of them from um, Lopez Maravilla um, back then that got, cut, got caught um, bringing guns to the school in their backpacks. And it, it became a big thing at, at the school because um, before our school started, we used to have to put our backpacks in the line and we used to, um, we used to launch our backpacks to the line and try to see who could get it the furthest to the line and right. like whatever, whatever. But um, this one kid threw his backpack one day and the strap went off, boom. And they found out that he was taking or holding a gun for a homeboy, but he, he was a homeboy, but yeah. they didn't know he was a homeboy. They didn't know a lot of us were homeboys, you know? Right. And we weren't banging like that back then. We were just, you know, we we're kids, I mean, you know? We, we, we represented something that we thought we were like doing something right. back then, you know, until a couple of years into it, then we really figured out like, this is, this is more than what we think it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah. You know, I, I heard you mention your grandfather and obviously he was very instrumental in, in your life. And then you mentioned that you got taken away from your mother and uh, she went to jail. Uh, where was your father in all of this? He was in and out of prison. Okay. Yeah. So I, I got to see him, you know, I got to see him um, until, you know, I had a, he died when I was 25. He died of cancer. But, um, you know, I had a really, um, I had a lot of a hurt towards him, you know, like I didn't, I didn't want, I would see him and it was, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like, hey, what's up? You know, he would come to my window and try to talk to me or, hey, mijo, what oldies are you playing? Or, or, you know, he taught me how to crease up my pants. He taught me, he taught me. I mean, I guess that's that's something good, but all right. the stuff that he taught me was all, you know, how to clean my strap, how to, yeah. you know, the dope, how to tell good dope from bad dope, you know, the the potency of the smell, like a carga, you know, what does this th those words mean, like a butt, just <laughs> right, right, <laughs> all right. that stuff, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, my mom, I mean, the only thing I remember about her was, you know, she, the gang shit too, you know, she was from West Side Planton, so I I I met all her friends, um, and. You know, it was just dope. I was around a lot of dope when I was little. You know, my father, um, I'm one of 10 kids, okay? Uh, uh, five older brothers, four sisters. Uh, I've never, I don't remember ever spending one-on-one -on -one quality time with either my mother or my father because they were always working. They just had too many kids. Mm -hmm. But on the weekend, you know, when I was in elementary, I remember staying home because my mom would go to the swamp meet and sell, you know, and when I wouldn't want to go, I would stay home. Uh, my happy moments with my dad were my most memorable moments with my dad was like, he would wake us up and on Saturdays or Sundays and then go buy us a TV dinner, okay? Mm -hmm. Bring us back home and we watch Scooby-Doo. That was mm -hmm. like our favorite cartoon, mm -hmm. Saturday morning cartoons. After that, he would take us in a station wagon and we'll go to San Pedro while he was drinking his kawama, his 40 ounce, for those of you that may not know. And uh, we're, we're watching the boats and he's just sitting there chugging. Every once in a while, he'll take us to TJ on the bus. He'll leave us in the room playing with our wrestlers while he went out and did what he did. The next day, we'd come back home. Believe it or not, those are my only, like, most memorable moments of my father. Right. Do you have any like that of your dad? Mm. No, I, the, man, I don't have nothing of him like that, actually. I just have, um, you know, just those talks about neighborhood stuff. We had a, a, a very bad altercation that, um, that happened when I was in my teens. And, um, it was, it was my fault. He had brought this camper and he used to, when he used to get all doped up, he used to like to clean his camper and, um, he used to shine it, detail it, do all, all kinds of stuff to it. And I remember me and my little cousin, we used to, when the bus would pass down our block, because we lived off of Ford Boulevard, right? The, it was kind of like a main street because everybody coming out the 710 would exit off my block and come down my block. So um, we always like to, you know, be out there throwing gang signs or doing stupid shit. So um, we throw these dirt rocks. And one day, you know, I, I we noticed that he cleaned his thing and we were trying to make it into the window with the dirt rocks. And, and he had got home from doing whatever he was doing. And he noticed his all his floor inside was all full of dirt. And he came. I remember he came and he grabbed me by my ears, and he he said, "Don't you ever, don't you ever do that?" Or he said something to me, and um, I took flight on him. Like I took flight on him, and I was I was on top of him. And my aunts came and they grabbed me, and I was so mad because I'm like, 
you know, he's my dad, but he wasn't my father. And I felt so disrespected, but not even realizing that I disrespected him. I should have never, I should have never did that, you know, but I was so mad. I had so much anger, you know, and a lot of it, a lot of, a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of us kids, we have, we have these, um, trauma, trauma bonds or like trauma things that we go through, you know, we hold on to it. We don't talk about nothing until it finally blows up. And then by that time, you know, that's how we catch our cases or we do mischievous things that we maybe we shouldn't be doing or make just making stubborn choices, you know, and it's it's those little things that we don't talk about that um, blow up one day, you know, and I had a lot of anger in, in my heart towards him. And um, yeah, till it finally blew up. And my aunts, I remember them yelling at him and, you know, I was like, yeah, that's right. Tell him, tell him, you know, like I'm not, a, I'm, he's never been there for me and all this and that, you know, and they were just, they were on him and he's like, he was cussing them out. And, um, you know, years later, you know, I apologized to him and I told him, you know, hey, I'm sorry. You know, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I was just probably bad, you know, but I never got to tell him exactly what it was, you know, even though, you know, maybe he, he knew what it was. You know, he never got to talk to me about it, maybe him not being there or him being in prison or maybe he shouldn't have been talking to me about stuff. But the stuff that he did talk about me, maybe other people grown ups watching right now or adults, I, I should say. Um, might say, damn, you know, well, you shouldn't talk to your kids about drugs or you shouldn't talk to your kid about how to load a gun. But you know what? It was good advice because I knew how to load a gun. I knew not to play with the gun. I knew I knew what kind of dope, what did what or what you could overdose from. I knew, you know, what people were high from, you know, what kind of people to stay, stay away from, you know. Yeah. So it was kind of people could say bad advice, but it was good advice. It was wisdom, you know, because yeah. how, how do we how do people get wisdom anyways? They don't get it from doing good shit. It's all, right. all from bad shit. You know, your mistakes, your repetitiveness, and that because that turns into wisdom. Absolutely. You know, one time I try to size up my dad, and uh, I shamefully admit this mm. because uh, my dad, even though he era borracho, mm. and he would get fucked up, and I'm talking about months without being sober. I don't think he could have functioned sober. Mm. You know, he never did drugs. He never smoked or anything. But always cores. You know. And uh, I, I would see him, you know, go to bed maybe about 10 o'clock in the middle of the night, get up, take a tall can in the morning, get up, pop another one and go to fucking work like that. So one day I asked him for me Domingo, my allowance. Mm. And he just said, I don't have nothing for you. Cause, and I'll be honest, I was a fucking bad kid. Mm. And uh, I was like, ah, get the fuck out of here. And I said that the first time I ever said that to my dad, my dad came back and I was maybe 16, 15 years old. Mm. I was in high school. And he said, give me the hitas, cabron. And I thought I was tough. And I just said, yeah, you heard what I said. And I sized him up and he, boom, chin checked my ass. I didn't let him know that I, I, my ass was dazed. Mm -hmm. And I just said, get out of here. Let me finish shaving. But I knew at that moment, to be honest with you, not to go at my dad like that, mm -hmm. you know. And I encourage people, honestly, to honor their father and their mother. At least that's what, the way I, right. I was raised. Right. But you know what? I'm kind of glad that I got chin checked, mm -hmm. you know. But I also understand what you mean about when you had a lot of anger towards him because I grew up with a neighbor, too, that took flight on his dad, mm -hmm. you know. And I remember I asked him years later, did you ever um, apologize or make these right with his dad? He goes, nah, fuck him. I hated him. And that was his attitude. And I'll be honest with you, me being a father, I don't like seeing or hearing things like that, mm -hmm. you know, especially when I got homies that tell me, ah, oh, fuck him, about their own son. Yeah. I, I, it, that's, it's hard for me to, to see that, but right. it's out there, right. you know, right. it's out there. So now, um, one thing I want to talk about is that um, I had seen an interview when you were talking to someone and how kids today, it is so easy to say the N word, the N I G G A. Right. Okay. Um, we never, I grew up more in the 80s and 90s, okay? Mm -hmm. We never used that word, you know, it, it, it wasn't in our vocabulary back then. Right. And today, kids use it so frequently. Mm -hmm. And even, I've even seen some of my homies, and I won't say their names, that started acting like these kids and say it to one another. Mm -hmm. They've come here and hung out with me and then saying the word over and over. And I said, hey, where did you get that from, you know? So, but my thing is this. Uh, uh, why do you think it's so easy for Rasa today to say the N word and think that it, it's okay or cool. The influence, the influence and idolization of another person. You got hip hop, um, and I hate to say hip hop, yes, you know, yeah. or rap, because we grew up with the same thing. We didn't use those words, you know? But you got this, um, 
how do I say this? We looked up to our dads or our grandfathers, or let's just say this. Most of our, like our kids, right? We want them to look up to us, right? Of course. And we want them to respect us. But usually, and it, it happens almost all, all the time, that our kids will usually look up to the uncle yes. or they'll have a cousin that they look up to or maybe somebody from another family, they look up to that that person and they're such an influence. And now, you know, with mainstream media and all this YouTube stuff and now podcasting and now, you know, rap and 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 there it's it's kind of a an agenda like it's kind of um something that's been prepared it's not something that our kids are naturally doing no there's a system to this you know like the whole projects or 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 stuff like that that's a whole system and section eight and all that stuff that that resorts to people or it's it's kind of pushed on people that are called a minority and we're not a minority these are actual um um Man- manipulated mind warfare if i could st- if i could get into like psychology of it um like the whole um if you look up mouse utopia um that literally um they take the males away from the household you know that's the same thing they do in section eight where they allow women to get a house and they take the males away and then what who becomes the influence of the male the young males in that house while whatever they're listening to hip-hop rap um or uh, other people, other kids that are going uh, going through the same shit that they're going through with a lot of trauma. Now these kids link up and now they have trauma bonds and now they see somebody or using a word freely has never been corrected because maybe his dad's in prison or he's got not a male figure to look up to, but he's got the hip hop or, or music or social media saying this stuff and now that becomes his dad. Very, very true. You know, now I'm going to say something because, uh, um, and I want you guys to listen up, Okay. Somebody told me once, well, I talk like this because this is how I was raised. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. This is how I was raised. I was raised around black people, and I was, I was from the hood. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Okay. Wilmington in the 80s, all throughout the 80s, was pretty much predominantly black, Mexican, Filipinos, Samoans. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, two blood gangs uh, uh, were here, and then you have East Side and West Side, Wilmots, and Inside. East Side is a lot of gangs. Inside, inside West Side is a lot of different gangs. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I started my music career in 1987, I was around NWA, and I'm just gonna say it because that's the name of their group. They were called Niggas With Attitude, mm-hmm. okay. I did a lot of mixtapes with them. I, I saw a lot of their recordings. I was in the studio with them. Mm-hmm. That word never rubbed off on me. Mm-hmm. I grew up amongst blacks here. That word never rubbed off on me. Then my next crew was DJ Quick, Second to None, AMG, High C, and I toured with those guys. They talk like that. That word never rubbed off on me. So I think sometimes, and I say sometimes, mm-hmm. it's an excuse because they just want to talk like that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. again, t- two of the most uh, or the most world-known rap groups I was around, mm-hmm. they didn't influence me. And you know what they always respected about me? That I like you because you stay true to yourself. Mm-hmm. You stay true to your. I never changed my style. You know, I never changed the way I look. I'm me and I'm 54 years old and I'm still me. Mm-hmm. So when people say, well, that's just the way I grew up. Nah, dude. You know, I, at least for me, that's just, I think sometimes that could be used as a cop out. Mm-hmm. You know, so then here's another word that people call each other or play around with each other. And you made a very powerful point that we don't, we don't call or a man doesn't tell another man this word. For example, what's up, bitch? Mm-hmm. To another man. Mm-hmm. And kids today, this generation uses, and I just don't want to solely uh, uh, put it on them because there, I even see dudes that are my age that, you know, what's up, bitch? Where you been? Mm-hmm. You know, or or here's another one that I cannot stand. I'll be honest with you. And some people have said it here, and I had to correct them. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Dick. Mm-hmm. What's up, Dick? <laughs> exactly. I don't talk like that. I don't mm-hmm. treat my guests like that mm-hmm. or my friends like mm-hmm. that. But I just think that those words, man, can really bring problems, man. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, another another thing is like, uh, uh, why do you think adults now think that it's so, they can freely talk like that? I, I don't have no answer for that. That's probably the, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I mean, they're influenced through their friends. I guess they're trying to, you know, um, 
I see a lot of uh, some dudes my age, you know, using the word that that you know we didn't grow up like that. Why you? I don't use it. I I, don't, right, I still right. don't use it. You know why are you using it? And I think it's just you know trendy. I think it's become a trend, just like tattoos. Tattoos ain't nobody. Ch real bangers had tattoos back in the days. It was rare you seen a woman all sleeved up, and now it's a trend. Everybody's trying to catch up to the next person. You know what? And I'm glad you brought that up because we're gonna talk about that after our break. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Uh, um, that's a good, uh, powerful point because. I think today it is a trend mm -hmm. to, to get tattoos. You know, I remember when I first saw, uh, I was probably in 10th grade when I first saw Wheel Metal right here get, you know, his name right here. Mm -hmm. And then another dude got Wheel Metal all right here. And then I, I started getting introduced to the tear teardrops, mm -hmm. you know, as a youngster. But it wasn't the way it is today. And I just think uh, uh, you rarely ever saw any women with any tats back mm -hmm. then. But today, today's a trend. I mean, if you look at 80s or 90s basketball players till today, one thing that's different is that they're all sleeved up, they're all tatted up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I say that to say this because uh, there was a youngster, uh, my boy's son, I asked him, what do you want to be for Halloween? I'm going to be a basketball player. So he, he he told his dad, I need you to go buy me those sleeved up from Party City. Oh, man. Like that was his idea of a that basketball, basketball player. player. Right. Just throw in a Lakers jersey and then buy the fake sleeves. Oh. So now I'm a basketball player. Right, right. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and take a break, a uh, 10-minute break. We're going to come right back, and I want to touch on uh, a little bit more on the tattooing thing and uh, what inspired and what motivated you to get into that, because I don't hear enough of that. All right. So, okay, everybody, once again, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, and let them know that Marvelous Inc. is in the motherfucking building, and we'll be back after this 10-minute break.
Yo, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody. Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 243. And we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with tattoo artist Marvelous Inc. You know, and that is one thing. I always hear your name, Marvelous Inc., but they never really talk about so much about the tattooing. It's always more about ask him about this, ask him about that. <laughs> what did you think about that? <laughs> I want to know, uh, and I'm sure the fans want to know, what inspired you to get into the whole tattoo thing? Was it, what, did you start off as an artist at school or, you know, uh, fill us in? So I, I like, I'm not an art, I don't consider myself an artist. So if that, let's get that first off. A lot okay. of people go, oh, you're an artist and, you know, can you draw this? And I don't consider myself an artist. I consider myself, and, and this might offend maybe some tattoo artists out there. If I see something, I could replicate it. Um, if there's something that I can do, um, or I don't think I, my I, it's at the best of my ability, yes. I will not touch it. I'd rather you go, I want you to be satisfied with the work 100%. But where I got into this was my uncle was a real well-known uh, tattoo artist, um, Pajaro from Meloyo Maravilla back in the days. And um, I used to go to his house to go kick it with my other cousin, um, one of my cousins, his son, that is, they're both artists. So um, he used to do a lot of tattoos um, back in the days. I was just fascinated how he used to make things happen like on paper. And um, he started inviting me over to watch him do these tattoos where he would literally, they were just dots. They were like, yeah. picking the skin like prison type, you know? And a lot of the tattoos that he was doing were tattoos on homeboys and it was a lot of cultura on our culture. And he would tell me, you know, the, the meanings behind what, mm. what a lot of these symbols meant. And um, he told me a little bit too much where, I mean, I think at that age, you know, I should have known what these tattoos meant, you know, and why they were getting them. And about how old were you at this time? And I was, I was about six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's around, yeah, I was going to, yeah. to play with my cousin. You weren't even a teenager yet. Yeah, I wasn't even a teenager yet. You know, when I was a, when I was a teenager, I mean, he didn't start telling me a, a lot of the stuff like when I was little, little, but as, as I graduate, gradually got older, about 11 years old, 12 years old, he would tell me certain things about, you know, the, a lot, just a lot of stuff, the hummingbird or, you know, what this symbol man and all right. the G shield. And, and, um, I was like, wow, you know, like, and you know, you had to be spoken for everybody has to be vouched for, you know, and that's a big thing with, with us in um, and our structure, you know, now they use it as a whole political thing of, of, of the structure, but as a people, I think we're pretty much structured in a lot of things that we do. And yeah. that comes from, um, you know, our grandfathers or, or the wisdom from our, our elders, you know, even the grandmothers, you know, we're structured where, we're, you know, we we're sitting right there sorting out the beans on the table, getting out the bad ones. And, yeah. and you know, there's just structure that comes in obedience with the, with our people. And, um, you know, I just gravitated to that like quick yeah. and I just wanted to know everything. I was like a little sponge and, and I wanted, you know, it was just, it was a, ahead of my time. Right. And I said, I want to do that one day. I want to be the one that that gets to put that on somebody or, or mm -hmm. can say hey, you can't get that right or you can get that and um yeah little by little you know i never thought it would come to to where it got to today with me being a tattoo artist or just a full-time thing i always had different jobs um but um yeah it just it just happened to be that way bro you know you, you know i remember i was in uh, i'm trying to remember i think seventh or eighth grade and i saw somebody at the back of the class with a needle and a little jar of what they would call indian ink mm -hmm. they would dip it and they would i would see the three dots mm -hmm. so one day i'm being educated in class but mm -hmm. not by the teacher right so uh i was like what well, well, what is that oh maybe that loca mm -hmm. it, so i always ask this and and i don't know if anybody's ever asked you this why does maybe that loca uh, why do why does it represent three dots? So why does it, why does the three dots represent maybe the, maybe the loca? And I remember I asked them that, mm -hmm. like why three dots for maybe the loca? You know what they told me? Mm -hmm. I don't know, fool. It's just the way we've always done it. <laughs> wow. yeah, that's funny. You know, Man. so I, I think a lot of times what we call tradition is probably something that we have done. And we repeated the cycle through our families, mm -hmm. but we really don't know where it came from. We make it a tradition. We make it a tradition. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, and um and um and I hate to get off subject, bro, but in in um you know in history or mm -hmm. biblical history, you know, um I, I have classes, bro, where where you know at my house where I get into biology or I get into history, whether it's biblical history or cultura on whatever I know and I could give it to you, I'm gonna give it to you, bro, because I right. think it's important that we pass this down. You know, and I, and I got, it has to be facts. You know, I can't just say, oh, this is what I think about something, or maybe this is how they do it. No, I'm gonna show you that this is what they did. So, for instance, and this is gonna, this is gonna offend a lot of people watching, 
um, you know, a lot of paisas that I get into arguments with, you know, until I tell them, you know what, don't believe me. Don't believe me. I want you to prove what I'm saying me wrong. Prove me wrong. Because that's what that's how I got That's I, exactly how you do it. Yeah. Yes. So um the whole Virgin Mary thing. Okay. You know, that's not the Virgin Mary that everybody's getting tatted or has tatted on them. I'm sorry. A lot of you know, my dad had it tatted on his back big. Of course. You know, with a bunch of flowers and all this and that. But her name was Simiramis. Simiramis, and she was the queen of Babylon. She had a son, Nimrod, who she married to, to stay queen. Had a son named Tammuz, which people think is the baby Jesus that she's holding. Mm -hmm. And the back is sun worship, what they mm -hmm. used to worship when Nimrod died. And she said that he went and became the sun and artificially inseminated her, where they get the whole story of the miraculous conception. That's that story. That's right. not the real story of the mother, um, the mother Mary from the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. a dark, would be considered a black woman today. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. So. You know what? And those of you that want to read that, uh, you could read that, I believe, Genesis 11. Uh, so, about the Mary? Oh, uh, yeah, about the, about the, uh, right. the Tower of Babel. Oh, yeah, the Tower of Babel. But I believe to read Semiramis, you're going to have to look outside of that and read about Nimrod as right, well. Right, right, right. I, I think there's, a, there's a, a book called, I think it's, I think it's called Two Babylons. Uh, don't quote me on that one, but Google it because I, I actually have that book. I read it many, many years ago and I read the story of Nimrod. Uh, but yeah, I think those are interesting subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? You're, you're absolutely right. And I do believe that even sometimes our culture is very disrespectful on, if you will, religion, even though I don't consider myself a religious man. Mm -hmm. But let's just say if I was Catholic, right, okay? Right. I seen one time like one of those shiny like Versace looking shirts. Right, right. And this dude had it on with the Virgin Mary in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But he had weed plants on the side. <laughs> like, how do you mix and intertwine? I, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I just think that sometimes if if I'm considered a religious person or if I'm a Catholic, I would find that very offensive. So right. why we do that, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, another thing that it's new to me, I never heard it in the 80s or 90s, maybe because I was ignorant or I just didn't care, is La, uh, la Santa Muerte. Mm -hmm. You know, w where did that come from? Like, I, I, I don't know, do you? The, the origin of it, uh, origins of it, I mean, I've heard five different stories. Okay. So I can't even say for a fact uh, this which is one is where which? it comes from. Right, right, right. Yeah. All I know is, is a, it's, a, it's a new religion that's man-made. Yeah. And it's picked up very progressively. And people have no idea about, I mean, that I could get into it. This will be a long-ass subject to talk about. But it, frequency, you, you, um, you manifest destiny when you idolize or worship something. You give your frequency to them and you open, you open that portal. Right. Like, so, for instance, if you believe in ojo, a lot of you know, yeah. our people like to do that and they wear the little bracelet. That's um, white witchcraft. Whether they want, they want to admit it or not, there's no right. such thing as a good witch or doing doing all that stuff. You're bringing all the deities and bad frequency that comes along with that. Very so you're true. you're manifesting that into your reality. You know, yes, yes. You, our people gotta you know shun that, bro. Like, here's another one that I heard in the '90s, and at that time it was usually used most by a lot of drug dealers that were coming over from Mexico. Mm -hmm into our neighborhood, mm -hmm. hanging out with us, and I would always see it hanging from their neck. Jesus Malverde. Mm -hmm. You know, so I would, I would always ask, like, who's that? You know what I thought? No disrespect. I thought that was a Tapatio guy. <laughs> you know? So, it looks so, like him. Kinda. Yeah, it kind of looks like So I was like, well, yeah. esto que es? Mm -hmm. Oh, tu no sabes. You don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. But that was another one that one guy finally told me, and I'm not saying that this is Bible. All I'm saying is that this is what he told me. This is what us, you know, dudes that be slanging and banging, mm -hmm. uh, he protects us. Right. So that was it. That's all I got. So anyways, but yeah. Um, but the question was going back to tattooing. Uh, we, we started out with maybe the loca. Uh, so around how old were you when you would say you got not only your first tattoo, mm -hmm. but when you gave somebody your first, their first tattoo. When I got my first tattoo, it was on my birthday, January 5th, 1982. I mean, 1982. On my birthday, January 5th, um, 1992. So you were 10 years old? 10 years old. T 10 years old and like you got... my stomach. Damn. And I thought I was going to die. I was on a kitchen <laughs> table. I've had about eight homeboys watching me. My cousin right there rooting me on. And that first line they did, I, man. You were like, what the fuck did I do? What did I do? Wow. You know? Wow. But I, me trying to be, you know, trying to prove myself so bad. Right. I held it out, bro. Oh, oh, what about as far as now you giving somebody their first um, tattoo? I was uh, 16. 
I think. And and my cousin had had um he learned how to make a tattoo gun too. He had did a tattoo on some girl, messed it up. And I I went and told her. I lied to her. I told her, "How come you didn't tell me? You know, let, let, me, let me do your tattoo." And um, she came to me and and she goes, "Oh, you could do my next one." And I did a I did a name on her, and it came out pretty bad. You know, I thought it, I thought it was good. You know, today looking at it, like hell, nah. I, what the hell were you thinking too, pendejo? But <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it started me off on what I do today. You know, you know, uh, I wanted to ask you this because uh, I like to ask these type of questions because I don't think sometimes people have the balls enough to ask these type of questions. So I'm going to ask you, mm-hmm. is there any tattoos you have that you regret? Um, um, man. Okay. I'll bring up two. So I'll say names. Of course, you okay. know, I always, I always tell people, even when, even if I'm going to make money off of it, I don't care if I'm making the money off of it. I'll, I'll tell them in front of their spouse. Are you sure you want to get their name? I don't mm-hmm. care. You know, some people get offended, but I don't care. Right, I have right. a lot of people that get get names and then they come and get covered the next week. Or they're right there in my pad arguing about it. Oh, you go first. Oh, you get it. Or, yeah, well, put it. don't put it too big in case I got to cover it. Like, Charlie, Fuck. if you're already thinking that, if you're already thinking that, then why, why, why are you even going to do that? You know, why even, like, it's just so they think that's a way to prove their love and it's not. Right. You know? Right. It's I, not. It's not. Another one is, um, and so this is going to get into Chicano and Mexican, um, where I first started learn. Well, I mean, I learned a little bit, but I start, first started comprehending what Chicano, the difference from being Chicano and, and Mexican and where the term Chicano comes from. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, I think, um, American Cholo did a spill on it the other day or talked to somebody. I don't know who he was talking to. Was he talking to you about I, the I Chicano? I just interviewed him on last Sunday. Okay. I think it was you then, then, then he was talking about the term Chicano and that he's a Chicano. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when I was 18 years old, I convinced my grandfather, I don't know how the hell I did it, to take me to the tattoo shop to go get a, a tattoo of Mexican pride on my arm. Mm. And um, he started explaining to me the difference between a Mexican and a Chicano. And, and I had heard it before, but, you know, listening to him now, and that was he told me after I got it. <laughs> oh, wow. so so not only did I, I felt good about getting the tattoo that i was getting you know being all proud mexican and all this and that but i felt kind of stupid after he, what he told me you know right. so the term chicano uh, meaning or or chico a uh, smaller than yes um came from us being the american americanized or past the border of the, of the mexican border right right um mexican americans that were born in america or whatever, and that would go back to go see their families, or maybe move back over there and um, get called bochos or chicos, yeah, um, chicano. So us embracing that, or or you know, we don't care. We're gonna we'll run with it. Um, the the term being chicano is for an Mexican American. It's not for a person. This is no disrespect to Salvadorians, Guatemalans, or whatever. But you know, American Cholo Gil. No disrespect to you. You're the homie. Got love for you, homie. Um, and I say this with all respect, he would not be considered a Chicano. Okay. Only a Mexican American, your father's bloodline. If you, if he's Mexican and you're born here, you would be considered a Chicano. That was a derogatory term meant for us. If they have their own, they might have their own, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, I guess being born here and being, a, being, you know, the majority of friends may be Mexican or whatever, and us being so-called um, Hispanic or Latino, you know, maybe they're, they em- they want to embrace it. They're, it's really not for them, you know, and I say that with the utmost respect to all the right. raza watching. Um, it's for Mexican-Americans, the Chicos. Right. They, you know, there was a, it was a derogatory term meant for, for us. You know, and it's funny because I shared with him how both of my parents are born in Torreón, Coahuila, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, half of my brothers, half of my sisters were born over there. I'm kid number seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so I come over here and I'm born here. Mm-hmm. I am no longer considered by a lot of people a Mexican mm-hmm. because I was born here, mm-hmm. okay? So I never understood when I would go back to Mexico and me being proud of who I am and going over there, they would look down at me because I wasn't born there, but mm-hmm. my parents were. Mm-hmm. It's funny how us being born over here all of a sudden separates us. Right. Then I started meeting all my cousins that were dying to come over here mm-hmm. for a better life. Mm-hmm. But every time I went over there, they talked shit about me. And I'm like, how are you going to talk shit about me because I was born over here, but yet you want what I have? Right. I, 
I, I don't I don't understand that. I remember I, I started working, I, I guess I got a, my third job. And there was two uh, two dudes from Mexico that were um, saying a joke, and I understand perfect Spanish. Mm-hmm. That was my that was my first language growing up. We weren't allowed to speak in, uh, English at home, mm-hmm. so I remember uh, they they said a joke in Spanish, and I only heard the tail end of it. Mm-hmm. And I asked them in Spanish, uh, you know, tell it to me, let me hear it. And the guy told me, mm-hmm. "No, I'm not going to tell you because you're not even Mexican." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bro, I swear to God, I wanted to fuck his ass up, bro. <laughs> but believe me, I laid into his ass, and after that, he never said that to me again. Because, you know, I just say, you know what? You're always saying that Mexico's so beautiful, and it is. But mm-hmm. if Mexico was that beautiful, why are, why did you come over here then? Mm-hmm. You know, well, why do you come over here and still try to put us down here, but yeah, you're here where we live? Mm-hmm. You know, and then you, you want to step on people that weren't born in Mexico, but yeah, you want to be American so bad. Mm-hmm. You know, so... If you're one of those listening, believe me, don't come to me with that crap. But yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm thankful that I was born here because my parents came over here. They wanted to give us a better life. Man. Mm-hmm. So all my kids were born here. So I'm thankful for that. Right. But I love my heritage and I love my people. And uh, I just don't like the few people that have treated me like that. Right. You know, so. So, yeah. So. Uh, so your grandfather tells you that about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. You know what? Now, you know, there's another thing that you said about being in the hood and, and I wanted to see how or why you mix those, these two things together. You were having an interview and uh, you said something like, you mentioned alpha males and beta males being in the hood. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the context of that conversation? You were saying something like, you got to be an alpha male or teach your kids how to be an alpha male in the neighborhood. Because mm-hmm. if you're a, a beta male, you're not going to last. Like, mm-hmm. can you kind of explain what the what an alpha or what a beta is? And I guess share it with us. Okay, so the conversation uh, uh, the, that the, what you're talking about was from the Peter Santanello um, interview I just did where I'm taking um, um, him around East LA and we're talking about Chicano culture, gang culture and stuff like that. So the conversation was even deeper than that. We filmed mm. for, for a while. So the way they edited it, you know, you're catching the tail end of, of the answer that I'm giving, Okay, you know, so people take a lot of things out of context or, yeah. you know, and they're not hearing the whole, the whole thing factually. So what we're talking about is about being from, from barrios or being from gangs or being influenced by your family members, me being third generation Maravilla, I was influenced by my grandfather without him knowing and without without um my dad even knowing um for me to be take over this part that i feel it was something that i had to do i i had to do this no matter how much you're going to tell me that's going to push me more to do it right. so all these parents you know telling their kids don't do this mijo don't do that don't do that you know when you give something energy you know you want to forget about something you want to stop ta- using the n-word then stop giving it life Stop giving it you will you want to you want to shut down a gossiper gossiping that it's not down to, to take flight or get down get down in person stop giving them you know stop giving them energy don't give them your energy right. you're, you're going to manifest that into reality and that's going to have an effect on you you know so um we're talking about um about being from barrios yes. and being from a barrio a lot of barrios out here are guys you know we're on the defensive mode all the time you know the the um and they like to call themselves bangers or they like to, um, oh, I'm a gangbanger and I did this and I'm from this barrio and all I'm going and all this and that, right? But a, a real gang member is not, a, all, I mean, he's about defense, but he's always on the offensive. He's the one always out there. And and if you're going to, if you want to be from a barrio and you, and you want to do this and this is, I'm not trying to tell nobody to go do all this shit. Of course. But you're jumping off the car and you're banging on homeboys. That's a gang member. That's a gang banger. You're not, you know, shooting from inside your car where you're safe. You're not doing all, all this and yelling on, or typing on social media where you're safe. Now you're out active in these streets. Back in the days, in the, in the 90s, we used to patrol our barrios. We, yes. We'd walk down and you knew bangers. Now today, you can't even tell a banger. They're wearing skinny jeans. They got all these Edgar haircuts and all these phrases that they're using. Now back in the days, you knew a banger. His tats, he was a pelon. And, um, the, you know, the, the, the big thing that we had to go through being from Maravilla, we had this one barrio. I'm not going to even say their name, but... Um, we had this one bottle that we go at it and, and sometimes they will catch us slipping, man. We were yeah. like, man, fuck these bottles, man. We're going to get these hoods. Like, you know, and, and well, you know, how do they look? They look like rebels. 
They look like when when rebels were around. They look they, they dress just like them, and and um you can't see their tattoos. Us, we were just out there like trophies, yeah. bro. We have big ass forty eight pants creased up, you know, wearing our our shirts that we're banging, um you know, our tats where you could see them, and we we're loud, boisterous about our shit. And these vatos look like pretty boys, you know. You yeah. couldn't even tell. So what we started doing was having vatos lift up their shirts. You know, lift up your fucking shirt, homie. Let me see that you don't got no tattoos under your under your shit. And that's how we would, we would weed them out. You oh, know, these wow. vatos are what you call it. And we even had to go to desperate measures, bro, where, you know, we had, and I, and I don't mean to put this shit out there, but, you know, we, we, we wouldn't, it was hard to catch these fools. So you would ride our barrio and then we'd park right there across the street waiting for them to fucking cross us out and catch them. Yeah. Well, you got to be strategic in this shit. You're always on the offensive, always on the offensive. And you, you can't, you can't get into a barrio and that's what we, we talked about oh you, you know a beta beta male is gonna get swallowed up yeah he is you know a, a submissive person that ain't about that life you know i mean you can only force a person so much you know yeah a, a lot of barrios are are i seen i seen in a cup with a couple of homeboys you know where they would be like um hey why don't you go fucking put in work Why'd you go put in work? Why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do that? Go bust a grave. Go do this. You know, and, and well, give me the strap. Well, give me the strap. Like, we had to go get our own G-rights. We had to get our own straps. We had to do all kinds of, uh, all, all the dumb shit that we, that we did, you know. And if, if you're not about that life, you're not going to go do that. Why are you getting yourself involved in it? And let alone know the politics of what you're getting yourself into. You know, and a lot of kids at that age, they don't know nothing about politics. They don't know nothing about the dope game. They don't know nothing about real gang banging. They're just taking pictures at their houses with their straps and money, thinking that they have all this, that. And they don't got nothing, bro. Right. They're not about that. And those are the vatos that end up ratting. They end up doing all dumb shits. They do all kinds of, I mean, it's, you know, the list could go on. You, you know, you know, uh, I'm going to say this. And uh, as a man now, uh, I admit this shamefully, okay? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that I regret doing many times when uh like my neighbor would say so and so came looking for you mm. i knew exactly who in the fuck it was or who, whoever it was it was so and so i told my brother come on let's go we both have in the car and we knew that there was always people like deep at his house mm -hmm. and we just walk up to their house like mm -hmm. what's up mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't none of this like well when you see him you tell him and mm -hmm. and we me and my brother did that several times without ever calling up any homies mm -hmm. You know, there's probably some of the homies that don't even know that we, we did that. But me and my brother will go over there. Hey, what's up, man? You got something to say? And then all of a sudden, madras will start coming. Yep. But that's just, see, the reason why I have such a hard time today is because today you got people more active on the internet mm -hmm. than on the streets. Mm -hmm. it, it, I get dudes all the fucking time. You're a fucking lame ass. Hey, bro, just fucking meet me somewhere. Stop this, pal. Mm -hmm. After I beat your ass, mm -hmm. I'll buy you lunch. Te compro unos tacos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and they usually end up blocking me. And I don't say that, honestly, to try to sound tough. I don't. But I'm I'm not going to waste my fucking energy, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, because all you're going to end up doing is just end up blocking me or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I shared it with you before we went live. The majority of the time, 95% of the time, I go places by myself. Mm -hmm. If if I go with somebody, it's usually my son. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever said nothing. And I thank people that come up to me and ask me for a picture or autograph or or they just want to meet me mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the love mm -hmm. but the few idiots that come on my page and talk shit like i, I just i just don't get it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you know you know how many i've interviewed two there's are 243 okay that means 243 people mm -hmm. have this address mm -hmm. ask me wh how many times a person has come to my house None. not one not one and i'll leave it at that so anyways um you also said another thing that i thought was very very powerful and i think we should shine a little bit of light on it social media has really messed up our people mm -hmm. uh can you elaborate a little bit on it and you know so social media lets you be whatever you want to be you can yeah. it's like that new metal metaverse coming out or whatever virtual reality it's a it's it's a we're in real time right now and that's part of virtual reality you could be whoever you want if i took pictures in front of a mercedes or in front of your car right now they're going to think it's my car if i took pictures outside on this street they're going to say oh, marvelous lives right there on that block and that's not the truth right. you know i don't i don't got a bunch of you know all this and that and you know people will treat you as such because they see this and they don't know the whole story like i told you we were talking about something personal earlier people don't know the real you 
they're only getting 5% of the bullshit what somebody else thinks of you. Yeah. And that's because they're dealing with something that's going on within themselves. All these, all these people that, that are talking shit is because they still got something to prove with themselves. They're not man enough yet. They haven't found themselves. They have no sense of etiquette or morals because a real man that has been through shit will know the devastating effects that it's going to cause. You yes. don't do that shit. And if you're going to do that shit, go all the way about it, homie. Leave your fucking cell phone at home. Get your quote and go handle your business. Don't do all this and that. And, and you know, a smart, a real gang member. Like, I, like so we were talking about gangs the other day with somebody. And, and they're like, oh, what do you think about gang members? And I told them, all the real gang members are, are gang, gang bangers. They're doing life. They're doing life. They're, they're not out here. There's no gang bangers out here. A gang, a gang banger, they all got busted for the gang banging shit they did. And if the ones that, that didn't get, get caught and they're still out here, it's because they went and did it by themselves. They didn't go tell everybody and brag about it because there's nothing to brag about. Nothing to brag about. Nothing to brag about. These people like bragging about everything. This is what I got. This is all my feria. This is, oh, I just shot at that neighborhood. Or they're going kicking over candles like a, a pendejo. We didn't do that. You don't conduct yourself like that. You know, you let the, the dead rest. That's it. They're, they're not here to back themselves. So how down are you making yourself by kicking over some candles or crossing out a rest in peace, you know, emblem, whatever? You know, you're not doing nothing but making yourself look dumb. Right. You know, right. be a real man. Go, you know, like, I mean. No, absolutely, man. You know, and I appreciate you being transparent and being open. But it's very, very true because, like, like I said, I met a lot of guys that, that have openly confessed to me after I interviewed them. One guy I felt so bad uh, in Espanol, he said, me dio mucha lastima mm. because he told me only reason why I got jumped into a gang is because I wanted friends. Damn. Man, it, me and, and me having children, bro, that really hurt me. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of kids out there like that. And may, maybe they don't have that father figure or that mother figure at home. Or maybe they don't have that older brother that maybe because the dads at work all the time, the older brother to be instrumental. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you a quick story of my two oldest brothers. Mm -hmm. My oldest brother was from Compton. He was the 155 gang. Right. Okay. When we moved to, to the city over here, to Wilmington, I remember I started copying and emulating what I used to see him write, 155. So, but my dumb ass got my ass beat because I wrote it on my house with a marker, mm -hmm. 155. And I even do a little stick figure. So <laughs> he came home and he said, who did this? And I said, well, I did. Mm -hmm. And I thought he was gonna be proud. Mm -hmm. But he scolded me and you know beat my ass. Mm -hmm. I had, a, now my, my brother was always like, shot or not his neighborhood, this is where I'm from or whatever. My second oldest brother was big ass fucking dude that probably got in more fights than my older brother who was gangbanging. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm thinking, who do I want to be? Because my, my young, I and mean, my second oldest brother was always a puro madrazos, mm -hmm. you know? Fuck you, fool. Fuck you, homie, what's up? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, and he doesn't claim a gang. He does, but I seen this guy get into more fights than the banger, so I was somewhat confused. My other brother was wearing Pendleton, my other brother was wearing slacks, and he was a manager at a, at, at a, at a store, you know? Mm -hmm. So they both taught me how to be men, because my father was always at work, mm -hmm. you know? But I was somewhat confused on how to be. So I think sometimes some kids may not have that father figure at home who they can emulate. For an example, uh, your son, your third generation, there's not going to be a fourth, if I'm correct. Not going to be a fourth that's going to make the mistakes that, are, that are, hopefully, you right. know, I, my son, he's an adult now. Um, I got one more that's right behind him. And, you know, I hope, you know, from whatever wisdom, if, it, if any, they get from me or by seeing the consequences that their friends have made, that they don't you know, make those mistakes. Yeah. I try to, I try to not give my kids a short answer. I'll sit them down and I'll talk to them till we're there. They have tears in their eyes. If not, both of us have tears in our eyes and we're right. crying. I'm telling them, I love you, you know, you know, Absolutely. I want them to know that, you know? Yes. And you know what? There's nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, I encourage parents to tell their kids, I love you. Right. You know, hug them, be affectionate. And I'll tell you why, because, um, other than my mother, I don't, I don't have a memory of my father ever telling me te quiero mucho, I love you. Right. My mother would always hug me, scratch my head, te quiero mucho, Antonio, right. te quiero mucho. You know, so I had that from my mother, but never from my father. 
with my kids, I tell them that all the time. Mm-hmm. My daughters, hey, babe, hey, beautiful, I love you. Mm-hmm. Well, my sons, I hug them. I kissed my son in the neck the other day, and I was like, I love you, mijo. I love you too, dad. Mm-hmm. Those are very, very powerful words. Right. You know, you got to always reassure them that you're always going to be there for them, and you always love them, and I see that with your son. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful thing. So we're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break. We're going to come back. We're going to get to some, some of the controversial questions. All right. All right, everybody. Once again, call somebody, take somebody, you know the rest, and uh, we'll be back 10 minutes. Take us away, Alex.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 234, and we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it. So with Marvelous Inc., um, there was a, like two other questions that I want to ask you before I want to get into the, the fan questions. Um, you know, I, I know you had mentioned that your uncle, uh, I believe, believe, was a big influence on your tattooing. Right. Was there any other tattoo artists that you enjoyed their work and kind of inspired you to do what you do, or was it mainly your uncle? Um, for back in the days for starting off doing tattoos and cultura, um, yeah, um, just just him. But as I've progressed over these years, I have a lot of favorite artists that I that I follow, and I'll give a big shout out to um, I'll, I'll throw two. Um, one of them is um, Orcs Tattoos. He's out of Under the Gun. He's one of my favorite artists. He's man. He's beautiful work, bro. He does awesome. beautiful work. Oh, you know what? Another one, Brian Ramirez. Okay. Brian Ramirez. He has his uh, his own studio. He just opened beautiful portraits, bro. Like. Uh, it's it's I can't even fathom how somebody can make somebody something come out of your skin look so real, bro. It's, you know, back in the days when people got portraits, you didn't see how they used to look. Now right. they look so real. I'm sure you've seen them. Another one for cultura that um, a lot of people ask me about is um I follow a dude named Goeth. Goeth is um one of my favorite artists, bro. He does nothing but cultura. He'll give you the you know the um explanation for a lot of the symbols that he's doing so you know you're getting a lot of wisdom along with it but you know he's one of my those are some of my top artists bro that okay. i follow there was a, something that you said on an interview that stood out to me and i believe that we can use it as something positive in case someone is going through what you went through and you, by your own admission, you had said that you were addicted to pills at one point in your life. Right. Um, can you share, like, how did that start? That started with, um, in 2002, I had my appendix that bursted on the Greyhound. I had moved to San Diego to get a job and kind of get a better life for my, my, my children and my, my, the mother of my children at the time. We were together. Um, and um, I was on my way back over here, and I just had I kept having pains in my stomach, man, and and it got so bad to the point when I was at, at, I got home, I just couldn't stand up straight, mm. and I was like, damn, what the hell's wrong with me, you know? I, you know, I I don't know what was wrong with me, so we went to the the hospital, and my appendix had bursted, and um, they gave me these pills, and I always hated pills because my grandma she used to have this little thing Monday through Saturday or Monday through Sunday oh. where she used to put her little pills, and she would take so many pills, and I'd watch her, I'd be like, why do you take all that? you know, crap grandma. And, um, and then I see what drugs did to my dad and my mom and just a lot of homies, older homeboys that I seen that became winos, you know? And, um, I said, I'm never going to be like that. And I don't, I don't want to try I don't want to have a pill. I couldn't even swallow a pill. Like, hell no, I can't swallow nothing like that. There's nasty. They taste nasty. Right. Right. And, um, I remember for whatever reason, I don't even remember what it was, if I had a toothache or what, but, um, I took one one day. There was no Tylenol. And I I took one of the uh, Vicodin that they had to prescribe for me. Yes. And um, that the feeling I guess um, I it gave me a, a good feeling, you know. And I always I always tell it tell tell it like this. Um, it gives you that fuck it feeling that <laughs> that you don't give a shit <laughs> okay. what's happening or anything around you, and you're just all nonchalant the whole day. Right. And um, yeah, I only needed I took a half a pill, and that half a pill was like had me like on cool mode and um i was in denial for a while bro i was in denial for you know years about it I, and i didn't take them like that bottle after that when i tried it the first time you know i i had taken one maybe one a week or you know four pills a month maybe like i didn't even i wouldn't take no pills like that you know and then um it progressively just got more and more bro until i was taking a gang of pills a day and okay. and um and I remember you know I don't know if I talked about this or not but um when I first came to terms with this and I and I and this I, I man bro I, I can't even explain the feeling that that you got a person addicted to dope or drugs is gonna know what I'm talking about but I never had to buy nothing bro everybody everybody was always offering me shit like back in the days when people would say hey homie you wanna go smoke a lovely or you wanna go smoke a pee dog everybody just had it. Like, yeah. it was just there, you know? And um, everybody just had, like, this. If they didn't have pills, they had dope. They didn't have that. They had bud. They didn't have bud. They had beer. You know, there's always something to try. And us going through our our our, our trauma or whatever we're dealing with in ourselves, you know, we want to kind of, like, forget about shit. 
Right. You know, so we do shit, you know, either drink or some kind of substance abuse. So um, the day I remember it was, um, I was, I was tattooing and um, this girl, a, a client that I had, she goes, oh yeah, you know, anybody that wants to, to, to get these, you know, I have a whole bottle of these at home and whatever. And um, I was like, yeah, I'll get them. She goes, oh, you know, well, um, I need like a hundred and something bucks. And me, like, I, I, I thought she was going to give them to me, you know. And um, the next day she came and, and she goes, oh, yeah, that's going to be a hundred and something. And I remember, like, going into my pocket. She goes, oh, come out to my car. And I went out to her car and I, I handed her some money. And I'm sitting, well, I'm sitting in the car and I'm handing her the money. And I never felt so low about myself or so disgusted in myself at that moment, bro. I felt like you're a dirty motherfucker for buying, excuse my language, but you're, you became what you despise. Like how in the hell did you get to that point where you're actually buying some shit, you know, to sedate yourself or have these, whatever you're going through, you know? And, but I still got it, you know, I still got it. And I went in to do my, finish my tattoo. And, um, you know, after that, I wasn't, a, I wasn't afraid to buy anything. You know, it was like, but I never said I was gonna, I'm not gonna buy no shit. If people have it, then bam, it's there, whatever, I'll, yeah. I'll do it. But you know, we like people that become addicted. You know, there's there's a minimal amount of time or a good amount of time where they're in denial about shit. Yeah. Whether they were addicted to the shit, they don't want to admit it. Or but you know, the people that see the effects of it are the people that are around you, bro. Yeah, they see it. You know, uh, I went to go visit a friend years ago, and he had told me, "Hey, I want you. I want you to meet up with me." I was like, "All right." This guy ra rarely ever calls me, but I've known him since like the '90s. Mm. Very very well known rapper. And he told me, I want you, I need somebody to talk to because I have a Vicodin problem. And I said, all right, cool, you know. Drove out to his crib, and um, he's off fidgety. You know, we ordered some food, and then he checked in his pockets, and he finally found it, found it. He goes, fuck, I finally found this bitch. And he throws it in his mouth. He goes, order me a beer, bro. So I'm kind of looking at him like, <laughs> all right. So he took over his beer. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a Vicodin, and, and I asked him, what was that? And he just said, oh, it was a Vicodin. Uh -huh. And I said, okay, well, you say you're addicted to it. Like, how many do you take a day? In my mind, mm. five. Ma. And uh, he just straight told me, more like 25 a day. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, homie. I, and those are, those are tens. They come like in fives, sevens, tens. And, you know, I found myself taking 20 a day, bro. Of, of tens and for my weight my body weight i had my i had built my my tolerance yeah my tolerance that high bro where wow. where when i went when i went into like i was i went through my first stage of kicking you know i went to the hospital and i waited three days till it was out of my system because i don't want to be embarrassed and be like oh i'm here because of this and that you know they just see the the low count or the high count of white blood cells in my blood and stuff like that and me studying biology i already knew about what was wrong with me so i was able to diagnose myself right, right. so um you know, it was it was embarrassing, but um, yeah, bro, you build a high. They go, man, you and you and you were addicted from from how long, am I Since you know, I took them every once in a while back then, but you know, back in the mid two thousands, right. you know, I was taking a gang of them. And they're like, damn, they're how in the fuck are you alive right now? Yeah, like, nah, I don't know, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, this guy was really, a, and then when he told me how he got him, is a totally different story. I'm not even going to get into all that, but mm -hmm. I remember, okay, I I, used, I shared a story before. I was a teenager. I tried smoking weed, 17, and then I tried smoking weed at 19, and I had two allergic reactions. It just wasn't for me. I didn't like it. I hated the smell. I, I never did it again. And then I hurt my lower back when I told you, I, I was sharing with you that I was working 2002, mm -hmm. around 2004. I hurt my lower back picking some stuff up. So I had went out on uh, the workers' comp thing. Uh -huh. They took me to the doctor and uh, he gave me pills, Vicodins. Okay, I was very leery of them because I don't pop pills. I don't. I don't even take aspirin, bro. Because mm -hmm. I never, hardly ever get headaches. I hardly ever get sick. I haven't been sick you no know, going on seven years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I took a Vicodin. It fucking made me feel horrible. <laughs> I started throwing up. I, I just didn't feel good. I feel like my head was spinning. And some people were like, oh, I like that. Because you didn't take it when they need to eat, right? Yeah, exactly. But I was just like, I, I can't do this. So I just laid up. I just fucking laid there when my back hurt and I got through the pain, eventually healed, and I went back to work. Right, right. But I, I don't know. Maybe my body just rejected or I took it wrong. But you know what? Uh, so you've been off now for a while. So I'm glad that you shared that because I know there's probably people that are going to be listening or watching now that are probably going through what you, what you went through. Definitely. There's people that are going through it right now. Yeah. You know, and I, I highly suggest for anybody that even thinks that your family member, it might be addicted to anything. Um, just love them. 
just that, that's the best thing I could say is love them. You're not going to understand what they're going through unless you've been through it yourself. Yeah. And um, they need to be taken out of that place that they're comfortable in. If it's a, if it's a home, they need to be removed from that, that home. They need to, they need to stay somewhere else. They need to be around more nature, you know, um, and be, they, they just need to know that you love them. You know, a lot of people are addicted. They don't think nobody loves them. They're going through a, a whole self hatred thing, you know, whether they want to admit it or not. Um, and a lot of, a lot of trauma shit that they're going through that they just probably never talked about. And they're just trying to get that fuck it in their system where they just don't care. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, one last thing before we get to the questions, how long total now years have you been tattooing now? Um, since 2000, professionally since 2003. Okay. And as far as the martial arts, do you still practice that? Nah, man. I wish I, everybody always asked me that, but uh, no, nah, I wish I would have kept up with it, but no, I haven't done that in, in a, it's been a cool minute, bro. But okay. I, I want to get back into it. I want to put my daughters in it. Okay. You know? I saw a video where there was somebody that came to your crib. It's on YouTube. <laughs> right. And he looked like some big tall dude. He was trying to test you. And all I saw was he swung at you. And then you just chin checked them, and then that, that was it. Mm. What was the deal with that? You don't have to give us the full details, but was that recent or? Um, that was a mm, man. How long ago was that? Two, a couple of years ago. Okay. And that was just um, yeah. I don't want to get into specifics of that because right. it's talking about stuff that I shouldn't be talking about. But um, yeah, you know, he just he, he, he should have never came to my house and tried to disrespect me in my house, or let alone my house while my kids were there. You know. Right. So um. And and this that video I didn't mean to put it out there. That video was edited and and put out there by the by the the um the person who runs that channel. Um, I will never put nothing out there. I mean like that. So I'm not trying to be boastful in any way, and that's not how I conduct myself. I don't want to be represented as as somebody that's like that. But just to anybody, just to let people know, anybody could be pushed to the limit. You know, it's not always a gang member. Just don't learn to respect people, you know, especially Absolutely. in their house or in front of their family members. And, um, you know, just learn how to conduct yourself, you know? Yeah. And that's about yeah. it. Okay, now the last one, I don't know if anybody ever asked you this. How did you come up with Marvelous Inc.? Uh, Marvelous Inc., just because Marvelous mean Maravilla. Okay. Or I mean Marvelous, of course. You know, it's not a gang thing, but, you know, Marvelous is or Maravilla is the name of the town of East Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days, you know, um, and just marvelous ink. That's that's it. So not marvelous Marvin Hagler. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, or not the Maravilla Prophet. None the, of that okay, shit that okay. people have come up with. The Maravilla Prophet. That's actually pretty good. I like that one. Yeah, that's crazy. The Maravilla Prophet. You're just the voice. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, our first question is this. Okay, this comes from the fans or critics or whatever you want to call yourself. I hope he doesn't talk about how Mexicans are Hebrew Israelites and huh? that Mexico is called. Is your car. Mm -hmm. what, what's the deal behind that? Have you ever spoken on that, or what, what, what are they getting this from? Okay, so where this comes from is, if and, and this is again, this is people that are that are speaking from the other side of their neck that don't study history, most right. likely that they don't. If they do study, and the person that's asking that, and you want to go ahead and have a debate with me, you could go ahead and contact me, and we could, you know, I'll, I'll listen to you. You know, I'm open ear, and you know, um, um, constructive criticism is always good. You know, but. How I, I study a lot, bro. So uh, not only studying the migration of the Mashika was, which was known, also known as Aztecs, but there's a lot of many other tribes, you know, that that are just as big, but not considered just as ruthless. Yeah. So a lot of stuff that they keep out or try to destroy um, the Spaniards when they came, the conquistadors, was a lot of our our writings on the stuff that we originally n knew or the, the our our frequency vibration right like um in the a, a movie that's represented or represents us is the movie that people like apocalypto yes you know and they'll show us uh, sacrificing each other and stuff like that but that wasn't us sacrificing each other we had to do that that was a captivity that we were under under the kini nine giants or the nephilim giants that were actually part of the mashika today there's still a race and that's where people that oh there's no giants there's no okay then why is there bones of giants being found that were over nine feet tall or over 15 feet tall you know so they need to um you know really read open some books and, and read or study or take a class Go take right. a go take a class or go you know what better yet go find a, a member of the Lakota tribe or the Chichimeja or many other tribes that are in Mexico and go sit down amongst the fire ask if they'll yeah. accept you as a disciple and 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 get get the wisdom from them because this is a knowledge that's just out there in class They're, they'll never teach you this in, right. in class right so I get this from the our migration 
we used to use a thing and migrate using a, a thing called cenotes. Cenotes were the reflection ponds of how we used to read the stars using uh, sacred geometry or, ge or geometry. Yeah. And, um, you know, Columbus didn't know how to do that. He had a lot of scholars looking up at the stars with, uh, stars with telescopes trying to read them and stuff like that. Uh, also, another thing that, that we know that the stars aren't planets, bro, or those aren't, those aren't called, they're called planets. They're actually frequency di dimensions that they mm. used to worship or gods. Um, you had to have, um, the, or another thing is, I mean, this webs out, bro, into a lot of, of course, stuff. Of course, Right? Um, another thing is um, our pyramids. They want to tell us, oh, you guys didn't know how, how we, we don't have the, 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 um, the knowledge to build the frequent, uh, to build the, the pyramids like they did back in the, you know, the 16th century, 14th, 12th century. You know, they don't have the technology. But what they used was sound, fre sound frequency to levitate those rocks, those granite rocks. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I could show you a video on it, a whole thing on it. I could also show you a whole thing on the stars and how those aren't, they sit in the firm, above the firmament in water. It's not space. Like people think, what's space? Space is just something just open that's just there. This is space. Mm -hmm. There's space right here. But um, there's just a lot of things, bro. But um, yeah, I study our migration period. So the white man, and it's saying to get racial, but the white man will tell us that we came out of the Barren Straits and we're an Asiatic people, that we're descendants from Asians and mixing with conquistadors, and that's how we have the slanted eyes and stuff like that. No, our migration and maps and stuff that you can still see on, the, on, on stone and stone tablets was, will, will show you how we were traveling the waters. Mm -hmm. How there's still there's still um, carvings um, dated from I don't know how long that actually it's ancient Paleo Hebrew. Mm -hmm. A lot of our language of Nawa actually means almost the same thing, twelve different meanings for one word. Yeah, you uh, know, yeah. there's a this is a lot of stuff, but yeah. No, it, it, it's true because studying a little bit of Hebrew, studying a little bit of Greek, and then studying a lot of words in Spanish. Like for an example, we could say one word, but in its proper context on how you mean it. It could mean several different things. Right. You know, like I could say, te quiero. Mm -hmm. It could mean, I want you, mm -hmm. or I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you, if you go, um, uh, for an example, um, let's just take the Hebrew word, um, love. But in the Greek, and I'm going back to the New Testament, it was, which was written in Greek. Most people would say it was written in Hebrew. Fine. The Greek word, there's, there's three Greek words for the word love. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's uh, phileo, which we, we get the word of uh, Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. And then you have eros, which where we get our English word erotic, mm -hmm. which where uh, it's the type of love where a man and a woman experience. Mm -hmm. And then we have the word agape, which means like uh, I would give my life because I love you. Right. Okay. So there's different meanings. Uh, all being on what type of uh, context you use it. So I'm kind of trying to give the best example that I uh, can because when you say there's one word, right. they could be many different meanings right. to a different word. Even in Spanish words, mm -hmm. you could say one word, but how did you mean it or in what context did you say it in so that I can get mm -hmm. fully understand it. So like, for instance, the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. People like to get in the Bible because the Israelites also have to deal with the Bible. Yes. And how could we think we're Israelites if the white man came and forced this religion on top of us? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the, that religion of Christianity is a precept of the Bible, of mm -hmm. what the white man has, has given you the perception of what these words mean or what the Bible was talking about it when it's way misconstrued or what it is. Mm -hmm. comes from scripture, comes from the Torah, which is actually law, statutes, and commandments. So, for instance... I like to bring to people's attention when they talk about or Christianity talks about John three sixteen, uh -huh. for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son that whoever shall, uh, whoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life, right? So the word world, what does the word world mean? Well, if you ask anybody in English or uh, uh, us American, what is it? What is he talking about there? Well, he's talking about the whole world, the whole earth, right? No, he's not. And in, in scripture, what, it, what the Bible comes with instructions, it says to, to study precept upon precept. Also, you would have to understand Aramaic and Hebrew mm -hmm. to understand these law, statutes, and commandments or the words that they're using in the Bible because the definitions and terms do not mean the same thing in the English language or Latin. There, there's, there's definitions for a word for each of the languages that Correct. we're speaking, right? So the word world in Aramaic and Hebrew specifically speaks of a specific nation, not the whole earth. Mm -hmm. So in the Bible, you'll find the word world, which is singular, the mm -hmm. word world with an S, which is plural, and the word earth, which pertains to all nations and creatures which, which God created. Mm -hmm. So when God in, in John three sixteen says, for God so loved the world, he's talking about a specific nation. Now, what nation is that? 
Oh, you're asking me? No, I'm okay. just saying, okay. like, for instance, right? Who would you think he was talking about? Okay. Okay. Everybody, right? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, the way I've always understood it was the world means all of humanity. Right. Because the world, the globe, you know, can, uh, uh, if you will, cannot accept him. It's people that accept him. Right. You know, uh, they can have everlasting life. So in his context, I always understood it as humanity, people. But you're saying more of a specific nation. Yeah, so now that, say say you, say you we leave this conversation right now and you go study and you find out that the word world is exactly what I'm telling you it is. Mm -hmm. A specific nation of people and that's why they have the word world, the word worlds, which is all 18 nations that got created uh -huh. and the word earth. And these are the exact definitions in Aramaic and Hebrew of what they mean, right? So now you study, now you're trying to find out what world is he talking about or what mm -hmm. nation of people. So what nation of people would he be talking about? Because there's a separation of Gentiles and, and Hebrew is Israelites in the, in the Bible, right? So Jesus was born into what tribe? The tribe of Judah. Judah. The tribe of Judah was a, a nation of Hebrew Israelites. Yes. So in John 3, 15, when he he tells the, the woman at the well, depart from me, I have not been sent unto you, but I've been sent unto my people. That's a possessive, of pronoun, a possessive pronoun, mm -hmm. right? He's talking about specifically, this is my nation. You get out of here. <laughs> right, right. So he's specifically saying he was sent to who? for To be a sacrifice unto his people. Mm -hmm. Who are his people? Hebrew Israelites. Who are the Hebrew Israelites today? Well, through migration, I found out that we are. Okay, okay. But now somebody may say, because there's another scripture that says, I came into my own and my own received me not. But to those who did receive me, I gave them uh, the power to become the sons of God. And that's uh, the same chapter, chapter three. But that's for another podcast. So, because mm -hmm. we can keep going back and forth, oh, right, and, right. And, you know, but it's all great. Right. So, uh, um, because we, st I still got a lot of questions that I want to get to. <laughs> so please forgive me, guys. Okay, <laughs> okay. ask him to explain on uh, how the flat Earth actually. I knew it. The flat Earth. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It. Now let me ask you this: uh, uh, Before you get into the flat Earth, have you always believed in the flat Earth? Nah, or? hell no. Okay. That was something that was just like, man, they told me about that when I first heard it, and I would just had my middle finger up at them, bro. <laughs> like, you sound stupid. You must be retarded. You're smoking some good shit. What was it that convinced you that the Earth was flat? Um, the all the statements that NASA makes. Um, the okay. the Hebrew word for NASA, what NASA really stands for, means deceiver. Their telescope is named after Lucifer, which they call Polarius, the morning star. Yeah. And the people that run this are this whole campaign to spin this narrative about space and planets right. actually worship planets, something that's in our cultura that we already know. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, it's there. They they worship the nine, which is called the nine lower realms of bad energy, um, gods or many gods or well, gods, right, right. Marduk. Saturalius, all the nine planets are of the nine lower frequencies, nine lower frequencies, which the Anunnaki and the Nephilim come from, their bloodline, which is still here today. That's at right. war with uh, the chosen people. Okay, okay. And, and uh, um, like, th was this something that was easy to convince you of, or, or did this take actually time? This took years, bro. Okay. This took years, and uh, everything, I, I know exactly where people are coming from. Exactly okay. where people are coming from. So the, my best, my best um, thing that, that I tell people is prove me wrong. Because, yes, go course. study. Don't believe me. Like even when I have classes and people are just right there, they're sitting right there on my couch, or <laughs> I'm chatting them, and they're just so. I, I know, I, I know, I'm convincing them, you know, but I still tell them, don't believe me, homie, because somebody's gonna ask you, hey, where'd you learn this from, or where did you hear that? And you're gonna say, oh, that that vato over there from Maravilla was saying all this, and he showed me a video, or not, no. Go learn, homie. You go read yes. up these definitions. You go look. Go do what I did yes. to prove. Because that dude, the dude that 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 put me up, and a lot of other people as well. But when I was real younger, and he put me up on game, he told me, "Well, prove me wrong, then." Because I was just standing right there, like, "Man, shut the hell up, homie." He goes, "Prove me wrong in front of all the homies." Yeah. And I was like, "All right, I'm a I'm a bury your ass. I'm gonna prove you wrong." And I was I went home and I studied and I made myself look like an idiot. You, you know what? And I'm glad that you say that. Uh, um, prove me wrong or at least show me where you know i'm wrong at mm -hmm. or whatever you know mm -hmm. i think that's very very important I, I i like the fact that you allow them to challenge you mm -hmm. you know so uh, and one thing i will say this that even if you do challenge him or or uh dm him a question we're never going to get anywhere by arguing right right you know so okay um something about ask him if he's heard about us being eight years behind from switching calendars sometime way back uh, so, something about the Gregorian calendar. Um, so there's times in, in different cultures. Um, yes. The Asians, 
um, they have their calendar, which is actually they're in the year six. I don't know if it's six thousand. Don't don't. I mean, you could fact check that, but they're a year way above us. There's okay. different calendars, but time is man made. We're not in time. We're in a thing called what people. The easiest term to to call it is the matrix. Okay. You manifest your your destiny by the frequency that you're emitting out to this world mm-hmm. or this planet, the Earth. Right. So if you if you do use bad frequency, and I'm gonna give you, I'll give you an example. Um, you have a wife or a girlfriend, and you tell her you use different words with her, right? This yes. is where our English language comes from. Our English language is actually spell casting. It comes from spells and in- incantations. It, that's literally what it comes from. Like the term "good morning." There's nothing good about morning. The frequency that morning represents the time of despair and anxiety or depression. It's just a lower frequency. If you said more, if I took one of your blood cells out and I put it on this table right now and I said morning, I would actually cause a bunch of little cracks and a bunch of shit in there, which that going through your bloodstream is going to cause you to feel that. The more I did it, the more frequency that I generated um, into your pineal gland that is generating that frequency electromagnetic current that's going down your 33 vertebrae, Mm -hmm. which is your spinal cord, that's going to give you that feeling. So feelings, like our grandmothers or our mothers tell us, hey, mijo, you know, watch out for your feelings or your heart or don't hurt that girl's feelings. You know, feelings, this is the correct term what feelings are. Feelings are the physical manifestation of the frequency that's being admitted to you. So if you're hearing a song and that song has good frequencies, it's going to make you astral project. You're going to go to a good place or a happy place. You're gonna, it's going to give you a good feeling. It's yes. going to stay stuck in your ear subconscious, you know, in back of your head. Like sometimes we're, we're just tripping out like, oh, where did I hear that song from? But we're, it's in our, it, we heard it somewhere, Yes. you know? So anyways, if you told your, your, your girl, beautiful, and you put that, that blood, that little blood drop under a microscope, you'll see the most beautiful design. It looks pretty, bro. It looks nice. It looks like a little snowflake. And imagine all her blood cells that have been transformed into that beautiful design. That's the good feeling that she's feeling. But if you told her, you told her the B word, or you yeah. told her something of a lower frequency level, that actually creates tears, if not cracks, and giving her a bad feeling. So it's safe to say that uh, words are powerful. Well, words that cause frequency. Yes. Right. Yes, words are powerful. Do you believe... When they say life and death is in the power of the tongue? It could be. Okay. Because you could kill yourself and not even the power of the tongue. It just your thoughts can kill you. Very true. Very true. As a man thinketh, so he is. Mm-hmm. Ask him if he heard, be, uh, oh, if, he, if being a public figure, wait, wait a minute. Ask him if, is it hard being a public figure while still living in the barrio? Um, so... Mentally, I don't consider myself a public figure. Okay. You know, this uh, this um, interviews and all that, it hasn't gone to my head. And I don't consider myself smarter or more intelligent than anybody right. else. I just don't let the world distract me. Like, I'm not into, like, of all this football or sports or nothing. I, I, don't, right. I could care less. Okay. You know, um, I know a lot of agendas going on that... that um, that are killing our people, bro. Yes. We're so distracted with other shit that we can't see what's going on. You know, laws are being changed, poisons being in our food, and yes. we're just, you know, consuming, consuming, consuming frequency along with food, and it's we're killing ourselves, bro. Yeah, and we're doing it. Yeah, you know, because we lack the 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 what is it? I don't even know what word to use, bro. We're just so distracted yes. it's by everything, consumed with social media, sports, wanting to feel loved by another person, companionship, attention, intimacy, you know, all this. Everybody's, you know, we, I was talking with somebody about, um, you know, sex the other day, you know, um, and, and, and males and females have lacked the capacity to to acknowledge what intimacy is. Everybody's just trying to fuck to have an orgasm or just to nut or be that be that person out. Oh, how, how did I do? Or, you know, is my shit big enough and shit like that without even knowing what real love is that you're becoming one. Right. You know, no, I, I hey, that's a powerful point. OK, the other question is and I'm trying to get through to you guys questions. So please bear with me. Ask him about, OK, mushroom slash acid, basically. And if it really opens the third eye. Yeah, all drugs do. Okay, now can you kind of share for the people that might not understand the question, what exactly, if they never heard, what is a third eye? So the third eye is your pineal gland. Everybody is generating electrical current frequency through the bottom stem of their brain, which is actually used um, or called the third eye because it actually has a lens that uh, that 
is over it. Um, how they dumb us down is they use they they we consume fluoride or they've actually been fluoridating the water since the 1940s. And what fluoride does to the pineal gland is actually it actually creates a thin layer of skin over it. So to give you an example, if I cover your eyes right now, are you going to be able to read my lips or tell say how many fingers I'm holding up? You're not going to be able no. to. So it's the same instance of covering your third eye to dumb you down causing ADHD or whatever they want to call it and all this shit of you not being able to comprehend what I'm trying to get out to you or teach you. Right. So, um, yeah, all, all, um, dopamine or things that cause dopamine or, um, drugs just low, they lower your frequency and they open doors or portal portals into the spiritual realm if you believe it or not and those are for people that believe in spirituality or you know but just believe in god or the devil yeah you know yeah. there's a there's lower realms of doors that you know you open portals and you probably you know you might not make it back there's people that do pcp and they're not able to close that door they start seeing demons and people are out here you know they they'll be talking like you go go to skid row and you'll see people talking at the sky and yeah. and cussing out you there's nobody there but to people that are spiritually woken, there's somebody there. Yeah. There's a demonic shit going on right there. And until yeah. you die and your your body, that orb comes out of your that spirit comes out, you're able to see that spiritual realm. Wow, that's powerful, man. Especially when you said that there are portals that you possibly can't can't close. Right. You know, because I've known dudes not a lot, but that have taken a lot of fucking drugs and I just don't think they're the same anymore. You, you know how I like to describe it? Their their mind, their brain has been rewired. Right. And ya no están ahí. They're not there no more. You know, right. every once in a while, you may see a little glimpse of the homie you used to know. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know if that's even the homie there anymore. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, would he be interested in becoming a mentor in his community? Because he is the normal gang related person. Um, that's it. I, I don't. I don't. Next time, please take your time and add commas or something. But <laughs> because right after that, he, he thinks the Earth is flat. Uh. So I like, you know, it's like kind of like saying, does he like Mexican food? Because he he owns a dog. Uh. You know, it's kind of doesn't make sense. But right. um, I don't know. Would you ever be interested in becoming a mentor in your community? Well, you do teach, so yeah, yeah, you know. So yeah, right now we're in the works, um, and I'm actually in talks with, with the homie, um, and going to speaking at like juvenile halls and high schools and stuff oh, like that. Awesome. So awesome. if he's referencing that, then yeah, de most definitely. Okay, uh, what's the best book when learning biology? <sighs> Is there one? Because there has to be more than just one. Man, yeah, there's not more than just one. Everything that you're gonna, whether you're gonna delve in in cultura, like people ask me about books. What are the best books to get uh -huh. in cultura? What are the best books to, you know. Every, the the question not asked is the dumbest question you know ask everything ask everything even if you feel it's the dumbest thing right ask it and and you know w w i mean research everything bro yes, from yes. the from the words if you even have to be in this is how i got i i did it i was doing experiments at my house bro like a damn fucking cholo nerd or some shit for real with water with proving the earth was flat or round right um a thing called refraction about biology doing a test with rice and and organic matter real organic stuff to see if frequency does change it or does have an effect on it because that represents us as being organic people or the melanated people being made of carbon the same thing of like the sun um you know seeing if is this true does this, is that, right. is that really work? And man, everything that I did and that I experimented, it fucking was fact, bro. It was like, damn. So I tell people even do that shit, homie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I kind of don't understand this question because I've never heard you with conspiracies, mm. but it says, what would he do when he finds out all his conspiracies are not true? I don't know exactly what conspiracies they're referring to. Mm. Probably everything that I've spoken about that if I find out it's not true. Well, I mean... It's the same thing. What are you going to do with yourself when you found out that, or you find out that I'm telling the truth? Fair enough question. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay, this guy, he, you, you kind of answered, uh, but he said, um, you kind of answered it already. Apocalypto, uh, how accurate is it? Uh, my dad was a lot like you, what you said. Mm -hmm. I do think, in my opinion, I'm talking about cinematography. Right, right. I thought it was amazing. Right, right. I thought uh, Mel Gibson did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. 
But I had a problem with seeing the, those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I didn't know because I haven't studied that. Mm -hmm. So I asked my dad, and my dad said he liked the movie as far as the cinematography, but it was, but he said it wasn't like that. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? You kind of answered it. We didn't sacrifice ourselves. So we didn't sacrifice the way they depict it or okay. for who they, they're saying that we just did it because of this or to worship the sun or to worship whatever God, the God of the dead or anything that we we're doing or um, it wasn't for that. It was specifically for the adrenal gland or the adrenal, the adrenal gland or the adrenalized blood and a younger female or male that was with that blood, your, their blood hasn't been affected by the trauma of the world yet. Hmm. When you drink that blood, that actually will prolong your lifespan. It'll stop your aging process. It also heightens your frequency for you to be able to, to go into these stargates, what are known as the pyramids, from one pyramid to another. Those are portals. Hmm. These are all specifically uh, aligned on a thing they call Aslan or Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Atlantis, or the, the, which is really Aslan, the, is the, that's um, off of Florida, off the Keys right there, that sunk into the ocean or stayed in, under the waters of the, the first deluge the, or the, the destruction of Earth. The second deluge is already happening right now. We're in the prophecy of that. The Mayan calendar isn't a time of ending or a time of the world to end, but the beginning of the end or the second ending. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And uh, something about how, how do you feel about other people who don't have a Mexican blood making money off of our culture? I want to beat the shit out of them. Okay. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so, okay. What is his view on, oh, let, let me read it all. Maybe we just, won't, what is his view on Christianity? I know he has good insight on what he believes, but I want to hear him talk more on it, uh, respect. Uh, so what is your view on Christianity? Do you believe the 1611 King James Bible is real? Well, the prophecy and the law, statutes, and commandments are real. Okay. But not the precept of the Europeans of what they placed on, on and made these religions about. So Christianity, Christianity, Catholicism, that shit's all for the birds. That's okay. not what scripture or precepts mean. That's that's for the specific people, which are the Hebrew Israelites, mm -hmm. that are to be um, a representation of God, of okay. what he wants you to be. There's a way to live off the land. Yes. There's a, it's called the Mosaic um, Covenant yes. or Mosaic Law. There's um, a way women are supposed to pray. There's specific foods that we're supposed to eat. Yes. We're not supposed to eat shrimp or lobster, um, stuff that has shells of the ocean. And what do, they, what do we eat all the time? You know, right. a lot of people like Some mariscos the, and yeah, we eat mariscos and all that. Right. Or like, you know, you got an, um, uh, a, a big group of people that are from really from the tribe of Judah. They're not African. Mm -hmm. OK, um, they call themselves African because they were trying to escape their captivity um, and got captured by the Hamites which are real Africans. How much? Yeah, yeah. Right. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, uh, Noah's three sons. Right, right. There you go. So, you know, upon these, the sh the, these boarding these ships and having been packed and crammed and stuff like that, when they would cast these nets, because they have to feed, all the, every slave was, um, it's money, bro. That's a bond man or bond yeah. woman. So you have to feed them, right? So they cast out these nets and get any uh, all the fish they could eat. Well, who's going to eat all the good shit? And what's left at the bottom? The shrimp, what do they eat today? All the leftover shit. So, yeah, of course, they made stuff like gumbo, and now they have these traditions that they keep. But that's what, those are just traditions of their, their slavery, their captivity. Right. Those aren't shit that they should be eating. That has no beneficial value to your body. Hey, on that part, very, very true. Okay, uh, what's, your, what's your worst tattoo client experience? Um, man, I have a lot of them, actually. Um, Did anybody ever fucking, like, throw up on you or cuss you out or get mad or no nah, there's a girl I, um, that tries to go at it with me in social media but same thing she was using the word dick and she was talking about all kinds of shit and my daughter was there and I, I told her you know I scolded her about it asked her can you please res um, speak respectfully yeah. and she went to social media with the whole shit and created this whole cam mar hate marvelous campaign and it's cool whatever you know but your, your character speaks of yourself when you yes. open your mouth yes Okay, this one I kind of don't understand. Mm. Ask him about the Chavez Ravine, uh, the Dodger Stadium being built, and Raza supporting Dodgers. Perfect question. So I was just speaking to this. Uh, um, I think I was talking about it with my son. I was showing him about the Chavez Ravine, right? Yes. And I've always heard about it. About um, I don't know if you've heard about it. No, I have not. Okay, so Chavez Ravine, or um, the whole area right there, was a community of, yes. of Chicanos. 
okay. uh, and Mexicans that were here. Um, they want to say illegally, but they're not because this is still considered Mexico to me. You know, yeah. we didn't cross the borders. They crossed us. Of course. So um, before Dodgers Stadium w- was made, there was a, a an agreement that was made, made with the people to build a housing projects or I don't know if it was housing projects or it was it was it was just a, a, a complex of housing and they were going to get first dibs on on um, being able to have a home. Yes. And um, they went ahead and and lied to the people and built Dodger Stadium as a ploy to bring revenue to the city and stuff like that. And they literally you could see it and hearing it and seeing it is two different things because I've heard it for years. Right. And I was like, man, I'm still a Dodger fan. You know, like I like the Dodgers or whatever. But ask a Dodger fan today or somebody you think is a Dodger fan to name the players on the team. They don't right. know shit. Fernando Valenzuela. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are they going to say? Or what color? The, they'll, go, they'll name the colors. But right. they don't know nothing. They don't know the dates. They don't know, you know, nothing. And the reason why is because, and I'm going to say it like this, and I'm probably going to get a lot of comments, and that's cool. But I think 80% to 90%, they're not Dodger fans. They're jumping on a, bang, a bandwagon or an idea of, oh, I'm a, I'm a real Dodger fan and I'm this. No, you're not. You're a lover of yourself. We love L.A., we love Los Angeles. It doesn't matter what the fuck team you put in there. If they're a win or lose, we we're the underdogs or we always felt like we are. And we want to see us win us win, not mm-hmm. a specific team, but us. We're not Dodger fans. We're right. fans of Los Angeles of ourselves. So when you get to know the whole thing of Dodger, Dodger stadium and where it was built and the people, those are our people that were torn from their homes. These are old senoras that were dragged out of their houses. These are young children that didn't have homes afterwards. You know, and you could see the, the agony. Imagine somebody ripping your mom out of your pad. And just because it didn't happen to you, you're not going to feel some, well, well, it didn't happen to me. The vato didn't rat me out. Right. You know, it should have an effect on you. This is still our, this is our tribe. Back up your tribe. You know, people want to talk about oh, our culture, this and that. They don't know shit about nothing, nothing. And it's yeah. sad, homie. It's sad. You know, uh, I think the only time, and I'll be honest with you, I've heard of the, well, when I, actually, let me rephrase that. When I first heard of the Chavez Ravine or just the name Ravine, I think it was mentioned in that movie Zoot Suit. Mm-hmm. W- w- was that what supposedly, did they depict that in there? I don't uh, know if you remember or not. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I remember a little bit, but I don't think they depicted it like the, like to the, the, to the extent it should to have. To the extent it should have, you know? Okay, okay. Um, moving on with that one, hopefully that helps you guys. I got two more questions, and these are probably the most two controversial ones. Mm. Uh, the other one of them is the Iron Jacket. Everybody knows what happened. Okay. Mm. Uh, my thing was that I spoke to an individual that said he knew him, mm-hmm. and that um, they've been pleading with him to come out and pretty much clear his name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now there's a video out there where you have shared and I'm if you guys don't know look up marvelous on YouTube and it'll all pop up and I watched it where you said you met this guy so it wasn't like you heard about this guy you actually mm-hmm. met this guy you, you got a chance to to see him mm-hmm. and actually if I'm correct even met his parents no we never I've spoken to his parents okay spoken to his right, parents. Right. okay so since then has he ever came out and made a public statement this is really me I, I'm clear in my name. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, he made a statement and he tried to make a video um, kind of degrading the, the some of the girls, not all the girls, but okay. some of the girls that had um, issues with him or, or were, were had allegations towards him, mm-hmm. you know, saying specific things. Um, it was a lot that had to do. It had to do with gang shit. It had to do with barrios that, uh, about him claiming a neighborhood that he wasn't from. Him not even being over here, you know, in the area that he was saying. And when I had him over here, you know, a person from... from if, if, I, if I come over here to Weed Miles and I come over here to the Harper area and I say, hey, homie, you know, can you take me around, some, show me around? You're going to be able to show me. Of course. Everywhere. I, the, I better. Your, your, your favorite taco shop. You know, homies are going to know, oh, I know the homie. Yeah, that was the homie. He's related to so-and-so. If you're not even from the barrio, maybe you're related to somebody from the neighborhood, right? right? right. But you're, you're going to be known of or heard about. The dude was scared to go everywhere. I couldn't go nowhere with him. Who's going to be there? Or, you know, this and that. I had to take him way out. By, I had to take him over here at the beach to go eat. Cause he was scared to go over, and I'm not trying to trying to downplay him like that. Like yo, he isn't, you know, this. But he wasn't anything he said he no, was. Okay, look, one thing that I appreciated from you when I saw, uh, the, the I think the guy Peter, uh, Peter something. Oh right, right, uh, yeah. Peter you were walking around your hood. Mm-hmm. You were, and I always said this: Do not trust someone that cannot go back to his own neighborhood. Right. And 
if you were to tell me what's a good restaurant, I'll tell you Los Tres Cochinitos, Al Cien, uh, Mayan. I could, I could name them all, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and because I grew up here mm -hmm. and, I, and I better be able to name them all. Right, right. But if I'm claiming now, you know, yeah, I'm from Wilmas. And you said, well, where's a good place to eat? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or if I tell you, hey, homie, can we, let's go over here. And you say, oh, nah, nah. It's active. <laughs> well, of course, but mm -hmm. you better know some of those active motherfuckers too. So, yeah, I, I get it. So is this guy... Because there's a lot of, I, I'm asking because I don't know. I'm only saying what I heard, mm -hmm. but I'm asking because you actually met the person. Right, right. So is he just a white guy? He's just a white guy. His dad's white. His mom's white. You know, he has a lot of issues, Um, you know, parenting issues or deal issues with his mom and his dad, you know, that they both brought up. And that's maybe just his personal issue, you know, what, what? but him manipulating our cultura. Yeah. And, and, and doing a lot of shit that he did like taking feria from from our people because our yeah. people are very giving people yes absolutely you know that's a that's a big disrespect yes now now one thing that i i don't ever hear anybody talk about because i saw a lot of videos because i wanted to educate myself before i made my own opinion mm -hmm. about this person uh um he he claimed he was from what tribe uh, um oh the oh iron jacket yeah well, he claimed to be a chichimeja member okay. and then he he switched off and he said he was a lakota member okay so he was Two different tribes and two hood, different areas. Hood hopping tribes. Right. Okay. Because that's at least what it sounds like, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, where did he pick up that accent that he always uses? That is not even his act. He acts like he can't even talk English, proper exactly. English. Like, oh, and he studies over some words. No, he speaks perfectly English, bro. That's just something he uses to throw people off. Really, like I've heard him. I have I yeah. have him recorded on my phone. Right. Uh, to, we're talking, and not I, I didn't do it like that. We were recording a class that we were, we were talking about when we were talking right. about the thirteen higher realms and the nine lower realms and prophecy. And so he's perfect, perfect English. You know. Yeah. See, because every time he was like, I run the tribe of and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, slow down, pal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know la gente que viene de México. Mm -hmm. That talk better English than that, mm -hmm. bro. So I, I do. I didn't really. That's that was the first thing that threw me off. Mm -hmm. And then when he said that uh, eating the the two pounds of raw meat, two handfuls of raw meat a day, the girls got sick. Yeah, they yeah. got sick. Two were in the hospital. One yeah. of them had to loop herself up and go in there with. Sorry, she had to go in there with a spoon and dig it out. It was rocks. Yeah, almost died. Yeah. Okay, and and and, and w w where's where's his whereabouts now? Do you know? Oh well, he's not. He can't be over here. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, and um, <laughs> um, man, I don't know. You know what? But I I don't wish him no ill will. Like you know, I, I hope he finds himself, and I hope he he buries that hatchet with his mom and his dad. You know. Yeah, you know what? And I, I just had to ask you because that's what the fans were were wanting to know mm -hmm. about. But I guess, uh, like I said, the question was, you know, has he ever publicly made a statement? I only chimed in and said what I said because I just never understood the whole accent thing. Right. You know. Uh, People thought he was in the hospital when he made this video asking, for, uh, uh, he did a GoFundMe uh -huh. and he raised almost about $27,000, bro. Okay. And he cashed that out, got out. He wasn't even in the hospital. He already checked himself out the hospital. He had a leg wound. Yeah, he did. But he had checked himself in the hospital. He was only there for about almost less than a week. Bro. And he got found out by some of the women that he was manipulating when they met up with his real wife. That he called every he told everybody it was his sister. Oh, so he was married? Yeah, he he has a he has a well supposedly married, but he told us all it was his sister, and it's not. Okay, what was the thing with his magic stick? Everybody was saying that, <laughs> you know, that you have to sleep with me to lower or higher your frequencies. Look, look, look. I'll be honest with you. When I'm a teenager. And I had a beer. I'm going to be like, hey, what's up, mama? You're trying to lay drag. You know, you, you throw on your best cologne, your car, and you're trying to look, you got a brand new white tee. You're trying to, but I would never say, hey, girl, you know, my weenie can heal you, homie. You know? <laughs> like, that's, that's a good one right there, bro. Yeah. So, like, like what, 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 was, what was this whole thing on that? Do you oh, know? Oh, my God, bro. That's fucking funny. Um, so... Oh my God. Was that just drag? Was that just his way? Yeah. So, I mean, these girls wanted to learn about their, I mean, they had good intentions. Bro. Yes. They wanted to know about their, their history, our, our lineage. They want to know about things, whether it's not from the, the, the specific tribe or whatever. They just want to know about our culture yeah. or whatever. And, um, 
he said, you know, a big thing with him was about receiving visions and stuff like that. And to have to, in order for you to receive a vision, your frequency had to be to a certain standard or whatever. Mm. In order for you to have your frequency, that a male, when he ejaculates inside of you, that he ejaculates his frequency inside of you, and that'll give you the frequency that you need to receive your vision. And when you let me know the dream that you had, I'll let you know if it was real or not, or if it's something of substance. So if they never received the vision, we got to keep trying. Yeah, we let's keep doing it. Okay. And um, bring that girl too if she needs help, help finding her vision, and that little girl over there. All right. Yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm 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 trying. Don't to let understand. me find out. You're trying to get a vision, Tony. <laughs> 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 I had a dream. So, like I'm gonna walk up to a girl with a talk and oh, can man. I can I interpret your your vision? So I I don't know. Damn, like that's crazy, yeah. bro. You, you, you know you know. But see, but that's my thing. Like I don't. Okay, there people say oh, only a weak minded person will believe that. You know what? Guess what? There are weak minded people out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I seen something called a t Tinder swindler. It's on Netflix. A Damn. lot of you guys seen it. I haven't seen this that. guy deceived a lot of a lot of women out of their yeah. out of their money. A lot of women just by using his mouth. Okay, and today I seen something called um, bad vegan, bad vegan. This, in a nutshell, this woman op opens up a vegan restaurant in um, in uh, New York. She meets a dude, swindles her out of all her fucking money, tells her to pretty much dump her restaurant and run away with me. Fuck your employees and fuck your investors, and she does. Damn. Yeah, that's what he did. And this guy had nothing. But here was the, cra the crazy part. Um, it was almost like the frequency thing you're telling me. Mm -hmm. Everything you're doing is an, it's a test. So if I tell you to wire me money tomorrow, are you going to do it? Well, I don't know. You see, where's my wife? Where's my girl? Mm -hmm. What did you do to her? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm here, I'm here. Then do it. Mm -hmm. If not, you're not going to sit at the table. What is the table? It's a spiritual table in California. Well, what's my position in it? You're going to be the queen. Okay, I'll wire to you tomorrow. He had her living in a fantasy land. Damn. You know, so I, I get it when some people have the gift of gab. Mm -hmm. So they deceive these women into believing like, you're going to get this, your frequency this, your whatever. But I guess it was... I'm surprised they haven't made a Netflix series about that guy. It is. It's probably going to come out, you know? Yeah. So, anyways, okay. And and you know what? Somebody needs to turn. Who's that? Mega Man's? Okay. Okay, last question. And uh, this, over 10 people have asked this. What's the situation between Lucky slash Hoodstocks? Uh, are you guys going to make amends? I didn't even know that there was even a quarrel, or is there? So I don't know anything about coral or nothing like that. Um, the issue with this, and I, I spoke on it, in the, I think on the same video that I did about Iron Jacket was okay. um, um, this person, you know, obviously he's not here to defend himself or speak on, on the thing. He, he does speak a lot on social media and then he'll go and delete what he puts or whatever. But, um, you know, when this first, when this whole thing with Iron Jacket broke out, and stuff. Um, the the dude was a goth kid. He's a he's a white kid. He's a he's a goth kid or whatever. Who, who Iron um, Jacket? Yeah, Iron Jacket. Okay. So I know that him and and um, oh boy, that you mentioned right now, he's a goth kid too. You know, they the the goth kids they used to wear um, oh I know for a fact, you know they wear eyeliner and they they did all this other shit that they do. So I I politely asked him because he was putting his two cents in something that I specifically know about. On, on the cultura part okay. and the, the guy iron jacket that's the only reason why i was speaking about it because i put him on my platform and i kind of vouched for the guy you know that it, it, well the stuff that he that he was speaking about our cultura a lot of it's true you know but him using the cultura to manipulate our people wasn't wasn't factual yeah. or the shit that he was saying is not okay so this person decided to chime in because they had some issues with themselves you know, and he stated it that he had an issue. He felt some type of way because, and we're well, specifically talking about Lucky Sun Tzu, right? That he had, he felt some type of way because somebody that he's seen get punked in jail or something like uh -huh. that. And so he feels bad for the underdog or whatever, you know, and, and don't kick a man when he's down, he's in the hospital and, right, and shit right. like that. Well, he didn't know nothing about the dude. He's never spoken about the dude. He just knows about the video that everybody's seen. They thought he was in the hospital. And I, I let him know what it was and told him specifically, don't speak on shit that you don't know about, homie. 
You know, you don't know the vato. You don't know about our cultura. And it's nothing for you anyways, bro. This isn't your culture anyways. And he got uh, he got offended about that too. And the reason why he got offended so bad was because the first time when I went on his podcast, and it's cool, you know, like I said, his 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 platform is cool for entertainment. You know, if you want to waste some time or you're a truck driver and you want to have some laughs, go watch his show. Feed me, handle that. Right. But things of substance, you know, um, or uh, like that I take seriously about our cultura, he, he can't, he doesn't speak about that. And he got offended when uh, the first time that we met because he wanted to know about biblical history and, tri and tribes. And so he wanted to know about the whole Israelite thing because he called himself or his dad Jewish. Uh -huh. And so I asked him about his father and he's, his dad's Russian. So I explained to him about his dad being Russian, him not being the real Jew, but called an Ashkenazi Jew. There's a thing why they use the term Jewish or the ish. The ish means pertaining to or the adoption of another, which yeah. is not the factual thing. There's a lot of people that call themselves Jewish. There's Persian Jews. There's German Jews, German Jews yeah. Russian Jews. There's all kinds of different kinds of Jewish people yes. that have been uh, migrated into that land using a form of gentrification itself. Um, those aren't the real Jews of the Bible. The real Jews are from the tribe of Judah, which are dark, melanated people. Mm -hmm. The 10 northern tribes are, are still have melanin or a lighter pigmentation, such as us. Cubans, Colombians, Mexicans, Salvadorians, Guatemalans, um, stuff like that. So I explained to him about that, the seed, the pheno, the geno, all that broke it down. So the next podcast, I know he still felt some type of way. We did a second interview and he apologized. He apologized yeah. and um, stuff like that and said, you know what? You were right. But, you know, nobody can see those videos now because he took them down because oh, yeah. of the accusations of him taking money from a, a, a GoFundMe or, or a thing that was started when we, me and him, uh, he had a homeboy lo uh, local that mm -hmm. we did a debate. His homeboy local, shout out to the homie local. Once again, he's very a smart individual. You yes. know, he's book savvy. And we did a little debate, which I had a lot of fun. You know, local, we all yeah. did. Yeah. You know, but this money was, I mean, this um, podcast was used to generate money for his homeboy that passed away. Okay. Well, I, I didn't know nothing about it. Um, and people called me out on it for throwing local out there. And I, and I don't mean to throw him out there like that, but this Vato keeps speaking about it. And it makes us all look bad. You know, if, if you have somebody on your platform and you say that you were doing something for a certain reason and you end up taking money from that from that fund me or whatever it's gonna make us all look bad like right. we're, we're all in cahoots with it right and i wasn't a part of it you know i knew the the dude the homie that passed away you know shout out to homeboy rest in peace right. but you know i didn't believe it in that and local hit me up feeling some type of way right and i told him you know what handle it when you get out homie you're about to turn turn yourself in whatever whatever and um he said that he only gave 200 bucks to the familia or just a, a minuscule amount of what was earned do people right. donating people donate on on these channels sometimes so on the video you can see people donating mm. you know stuff like that so i told him you want to you want to keep poking at me you know making little memes and all this little girl shit you know why don't you just if you want to get down and do all that shit then you could do that but i get my 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 telephone call hung up on he goes and calls up other podcasts hey you have my back and don't have marvelous on your on your podcast and those homies which i'm not going to put their names out there but they're they're two wild chicano um or one was a chicano the other is a, a, a homeboy too but um you know these are two podcasts that a lot of rasa watch and you know why are you gonna if we're from the 90s homie we don't conduct ourselves like that like, why are you going to go do social media shit and do all this little, be a fucking man, you know? And that's, that's just, my, that's how I conduct myself still. Yeah. I mean, I don't go do all this shit and, and doing all, all this fucking typing. Nah, here, here's my fucking address, homie. If I don't pick up the phone, make up a damn uh, appointment with me for a tattoo. And I'm going to definitely see you then. You know, I'm not going to go right here, oh, Lucky's this, Lucky's that. I was only right. answering what people were asking me. You know, and, and because the Vato keeps putting out pictures of me. I have a gang of pictures that people say, oh, put this one up, put this one up. But I don't care about none of that. Right, that that right. doesn't, I don't, I don't care. I'm not yeah, gonna, you don't conduct yourself like yeah, that. Yeah, I don't conduct myself like that. I, I have never seen anything that, uh, but and then again, this is my sixth page on mm -hmm. Instagram. I've never seen anything that he's ever posted mm -hmm. or actually has ever said about you. Right, right. Possibly because like what you said, he took down. down. It's taken down. But you know what? These were the questions that the fans asked. So right, right, right. for me, since it was probably the most requested one, right, right. I just had to respectfully ask, yeah. uh, would you ever, and, and now this is coming from me, would you ever be willing to sit down and talk to him if he wanted to? As in, to, as in, 
okay, this is how I take it, right? And um, people can feel however they want. Once you disrespect the person, okay, you can't take that back. It, it's somebody. It, it's the same thing, you know. Homeboy wants to talk about prison so much and wants to talk about jail so much. Once you call a, a man a bitch, or once you use certain or call him out of his name and and call out his character or the person that he is from his barrio, that's a big disrespect, and that that's for the street. So you want to act street, then be street. Don't don't make an apology video afterwards saying, oh, you know what? That's not how we conduct ourselves. And I wasn't. A no, you opened your mouth. So learn how to conduct yourself when that time comes where God miraculously puts us in the same room or whatever or in the same fucking um, wherever, wherever, you know, whatever is going to happen, you know. But until then, I don't wish to sit down with him. Okay. He's not he's not my people. He's he's Russian. No disrespect to Russians, but. He should go learn about his culture, start speaking about stuff that he doesn't know about, and just live his life, take care of his family, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's it. You know, uh, I, I got no ill will towards him. Okay. <clears throat> now, I respectfully want to say this. I just wish things were a little bit different because mm. I can't really say I know him, know him, mm. but I have I've seen him in person a couple mm -hmm. of times, I believe twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, He's a funny dude. I, I, I just wish that things were better. That's all I want to say. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I wish too. You know? Okay. Other than that, man, anything that I didn't ask you, anything you want to promote, like 2022, what can people expect for Marvelous Inc.? Are you going to be at any tattoo expo? Do you travel doing tattoos or is it mainly out of your shop? It's mainly out of my shop. Um, I will travel like if it's a tattoo party. Okay. Um, but as far as like being out there, like different stuff that, that uh, functions, I'm, I'm everywhere. I go everywhere. Homie. Okay. Yeah. If I'm not with my kids, I'm by myself. Most of the time I'm by myself, but you know, I go, I go everything that's promotion. Um, I'm working on a, on a book right now. Um, I don't want to say what it's about, uh -huh. you know, just yet, but, um, there's a couple of more podcasts that, that they should be dropping episodes. People are always asking me, you know, whose podcast or what, but I always post it on my, you know, such as this one right, right here. And, um, no, just, um, just promote, you know, positivity, you know, just, um, Try to educate yourself before you speak on shit that you don't know. Because Rick. that could get you in a wreck, you know? Fernando Valenzuela did a commercial in the <laughs> 80s, and he said, antes de hablar es bueno pensar. Mm. So, be, you know what? Before you talk, better to think, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have something to think, at least put something in your mind worth mm -hmm. speaking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I always believe this. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it's in here, it's going to come out through here. Si son puras groserías, if it's a bunch of bullshit, it's because you have that bullshit here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you're right. You're absolutely you know, right. Look, you can always judge a person, you know, oh, Tony, we shouldn't judge. No, we should. Mm -hmm. We should be critical about certain people. Mm -hmm. They're, if bullshit constantly continues, guess what? They're full of shit. They're full of shit. Yep. So. <laughs> exactly. So, so. That was perfect. Okay. Uh, Alex, anything worth bringing up? Oh. Right here, uh, I had a question of... Uh, I asked the audience, are you enjoying the episode? Out of 159 votes, 89% said, hell yeah, homie. <laughs> and 11% said, Charlie, so you nah. put butt. Cool. Okay. So no other questions other than what we asked already? Okay. Anything else you want to bring up, my bro? No, that's it. Okay. Uh, Mega Man, you have anything? Dude, I'm loving this fucking episode. This is, this is, this is fucking history. All good. Great All good, man. Hey, I appreciate you, though, okay. for having me on. No, Thank you, you know what, my brother? Yeah. Thank you for being very transparent. Thank, Thank you for sharing with us. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully, this is not your last time. I would love to bring you back and, Down, and discuss it. So, uh, uh, other than that, um, Mijo, you have anything? No, shit. I'm already ready. Let's bug them again. Mm. <laughs> I need a part I two. We need a part two. All, like all good. Idea. All good. If you guys want part two, put part two on there. But other than that, uh, Wednesday, I have another special guest. I'll put up the flyer tomorrow. And I want to thank my crew, Alex, Alex Cervantes, the guy on the ones and twos. My son, B. Scanless, for helping me promote this. Norbert, who helped me promote this as well. Uh, uh, Anthony, the Hip Hop Jedi. I also want to announce that next week, well, yeah, this today Sunday. Next week, we're going to have another Drinking with the Wizard. If you guys have not seen the Drinking with the Wizard we just had, check it out. That shit was fucking hilarious. Like, all we do is just drink, and we just chill and talk about topics, current events, or whatever. Uh, we don't have anything scripted. Uh, uh, at the end of this month, I'm going to have another verse for verse, so be looking out for that one. Uh, uh, we're still doing Dining with the Wizard, and then eventually we're going to have Freaky Tales again. So, uh, check out Drinking with the Wizard. I got some more guests coming in. Wednesday, we have another guest, and then Sunday, 
because uh, it's Easter. Most people know it as Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I'm not going to have a podcast, so I'm going to spend time with my family. So other than that, much love, much respect. Thank everybody for tuning in and uh, read a book. You know what? Mm. Cheat on your phone <laughs> by reading a book. That's right. So. Got it.